Bam. It, are we out? Oh, oh that yeah. seems to be. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I. But I was just saying, like, do do we really believe that Calvin transmogrifies his stuffed animal into being an actual tiger, or is it just the power of Calvin's imagination? I feel like that's the most critical. I, I think we ha if you watched the la the last episode of the season or the last you know obviously when they were closing it out, mm -hmm. we know that the answer is you know oh hey, hey oh. we are oh we're, seems we're like there's a, a whole bunch of people here hey how you guys doing oh, welcome uh, <laughs> welcome back checking out uh, you know it's our worst intro rem for a podcast. reminiscing our old uh, you know childhood cartoons you know it's great it is because that's how we yeah. do it. And comic strips and that's not what this podcast is about welcome everybody to another episode of best of our week i'm juan carlos bagnell this is my buddy tk bay and hey. we're about to break down the best tech of our week which is this is basically going to be the xiaomi 13 I, I, ultra been, podcast I, I i added things to the title just purely because i felt like it's otherwise it's going to be like a very i mean we could talk for hours yes uh sorry <laughs> we got we got we got the goods uh we got the in so wait so quick question is yeah. the case in your box same color as mine, or is it green? Yeah, it's it's a black case. Oh, so when we have a case on, we both look like we're having the same. Oh, okay, then don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Mine, mine is obviously, uh, you know, the the. the I mean, we're all the same color with the lights out. It's it's pretty that much true. how that all goes. That's know? exactly what she said. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, no the reason I say this is, um, <laughs> I seem to be like one of the very unique people that has even this color. Which is yeah, weird. You, got, you because got the black one. I got the black one where everybody got like, I, and I was in. I, I, I'm not. I'm not hating on it. I'm, I'm like, I, mm -hmm. I, I. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I I, <laughs> I I already put in money for the grip, and I yeah, originally kind of. I, I have the grip the, on the, order too. Yeah, I, I wanted the phone and the grip to match, but with the fact that the grip comes only in green, whatever version of color that I'm getting, anyways, because it's it, for the most part that those two are going to be married, and that said, they're going to be. It's going to be on it all the time. Yep. Okay. <laughs> it's, I, I went green because I also wanted it so it, it is not uh, I thought it would be a little closer to the sort of gray green that the, mm -hmm. uh, that the, the Xiaomi 12 year? S Ultra was yeah and if you put them side by side oh it is it is darker. a richer green well it's, it's a greener I was gonna say it's a green. it's, a, okay, it's so. a green green this is like a gray I don't know what you would call this color I am not good at color I was trained as an audio guy so I can tell you what this color sounds like. Ah, but I can't tell you what does it, it looks does it, like. Does, does it smack? Does it sound like a smack right across her face? It wakes you up with the with an amazing no uh, no, 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 no 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 no. It's smack. It's, it's much. It's a. Uh, it's more Seattle overcast morning sound than that. So yeah. Wait 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 way to go on that that whole description. I kind of have an idea of that. I've been to Seattle before, so I kind of have an idea. Okay, we, we've we've had the like, the Xiaomi thirteen sorry. Ultra for a couple of days now. Uh, oh yeah, like I I only had it in the rounds. I got it late Sunday night, um, right before I was supposed to get on a flight on Monday morning. Hey. So yeah, uh, between the two of us, we've had it for about four days. Uh, Juan literally, you know, getting his his hands on yeah. it, and and for me, I I got to do one trip with it. I'll say that I thought I was gonna miss it, but DHL came in the clutch at like eight o'clock at night on Sunday. The guy shows up at my door, <laughs> and I'm like, it said that it was stuck at the LA so, so thing. DHL rang my doorbell in the last couple minutes of Monday's podcast, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I got to get down there. I thought Marie was here to trying to intercept them and mm -hmm, uh yeah. she was apparently uh, indisposed and could not make it to the door and so i missed the dhl guy by a minute and then had to <laughs> had to wait a whole extra day to get my hands on the xiaomi 13 ultra but i i, I want to jump right in because absolutely uh, often we we kind of like banter around and stuff like that no no no. i'm with you i'm with you just I, go ahead um, give me your review I, I yeah, my full review, in depth comparisons, long term for forty eight less than forty eight hours. Because um, somebody did that last week, which really blew my mind, knowing that they no. barely had the phone for two days. No, yes, yeah, yeah. I, and this is the, uh, so I, I want to shout out because I think yeah, he's in the chat. Our our good buddy Barry Johnson. Oh yeah. Um, also also recently did a video talking about uh, it was like the Vivo versus the Oppo Find X six Pro. Yes. And his experiences, I, I really hope people listen to that video because it is maddening trying to talk about phone performance, camera performance in 
the week before this really ships out to consumers. Mm -hmm. Because we're getting so many updates, we're getting patches, we're getting bug fixes. Those first couple updates are massive at changing up how the cameras perform, how the phone performs. Mm -hmm. Even just the layout of the camera UI has changed significantly over the very first patch update that came to this phone. And the second you see someone in this time frame using the word review, you should immediately question their credibility. Absolutely. <laughs> like, no, no, there's no, I, no I, way I, that can be a it, review. It, it, this is software that most consumers will never see. Yeah. And 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 for anybody to, I, and I, what I really love is the people that try to bend it when they say, well, it's a 24 hour review. I'm like, what kind of crap? Nah. I don't really like using this language, but it really bugs nah. me when somebody does that with like nah, 24 did, hours, big, 48 hour review. Yeah. A big like, heart cut out in my first magical day. <laughs> I didn't even say first impressions. It's It's me like 10 minutes of rambling. Of yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, I picked it up and here's the fingerprint sensor and I don't know, I'm so excited. But I, I kind of wanted to jump in immediately on this one because sure. I think for both of us, the Vivo Xiaomi fight has been one of the more interesting camera fights right now for, for yeah. the different, very different takes on similar hardware. So the technologies, yes. the, the hardware is similar. But mm -hmm. what these two companies ultimately arrive at producing when we look at our photos and our videos is surprisingly different. Not just, oh, let's get a little tweaked here and it's a little tweaked there. No, like these are fundamentally different styles of processing. Yeah. And then on top of that, you have the Mi 11 Ultra. I have the Xiaomi yeah. 12S Ultra. So we yeah. also have kind of a continuity of these mega camera sensor phones that have really been impressing over the last two years. Yeah. So you get the phone, you're about to go on a trip. I'm assuming that's the camera you took with you while traveling. I took all three. I took the Find X6 Pro, <laughs> I took the, <laughs> the 13 Ultra, and I took the Vivo X90 Pro because <laughs> I didn't bring no DSLR with me. I, I showed no. up with phones. You know, the phone, phone, phone guy. Um, yeah, no, uh, I, I will say it has been the primary camera that I've been shooting with for the last four days. I have not shot with anything. I mean, I take that back. I did shoot a whole bunch of comparison shots between the 13 Ultra and the Find X6 Pro because I want to put something together as well um, while I was in Chicago. Because I, I had an opportunity to go check out and go visit Moto um, in Chicago. And I want to say, obviously, thank you very much for, for, for allowing me to be part of that. Um, more to come, obviously, on the, on that conversation. I got a chance to play with the riser there, but uh, the 13 Ultra has been the camera I've been using. Uh, all my mm. shots have been on it. Uh, video, um, I, I love the transcribe mode in the video section where you're able to record a video and it transcribes you exactly yeah. as you do it. And you can edit the transcriptions. It's not just an auto, God help you it's if it gets the right word. Pretty it's good. Pre yeah. It is pretty good. Like this is, this is a feature you typically pay for, but... Um, Playing around with the cameras, um, trying to dial in, getting more used to the style of the camera because it's a very different camera. It's, it shoots very different than the X90 Pro. It shoots very different than the Find X6 Pro. So it, it's a it's a an approach to photography from the sense of dialing in, honing in, and practicing, using the camera, taking shots, understanding the difference between f1.9 and 4.0, what works better for what environment that you're in, mm -hmm. where do you want to actually boost some colors, or do you want to actually basically just trying to break, dial it down a little bit. Right, and all of that so, should easily be accomplished in a 24-hour review. Absolutely. I was done Monday afternoon. And then it's all of this, I've been just lazy. I've been just uh, progressing. I mean, yeah, just kind of kicking back and doing whatever, playing some Vampire Survivors. It took me about 17 oh, minutes to really review Dude, phone, I played Vampire so. Survivors with the Max, the Rokid Max on the plane back. I was absolutely It's good, epic. right? Okay. Dude. We're, Anyways, we, yeah, we are going go go to get, right, get to Rokid right. Max yeah. because now I'm so glad that you're you're. But I was using it with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Having video out on a Xiaomi is like... Yes. I have been Sorry. dying. Yes. It killed me on the Mi 11. It killed me For on the 12s Ultra. For years. There was no reason why. So, the so 13 now, Pro now, should have had it. Like, the 13 Pro really should have had it. The that, 13. Go, just going to the HN2. Yeah. The 13 and the 13 Pro are absolutely the performance tier. The 13 yeah. is a little bit more of a one plus 11 kind of play. Yeah, now you can the... import the Xiaomi 13 for like 650 bucks. Nice. Because remember, okay. its original launch price was more like seven ninety nine euro. Yeah, yeah, that didn't stay. That, yeah, that, that didn't and, stick around. Yeah, um, yeah that's typically but, not. But 
now on the Ultra, we finally have what I think is deserving of an Ultra feature. The entire phone is built as kind of a platform I should for have that phone. kind of showcase of technology. So not I think just we cameras. forgot the tweet, by the way. <laughs> oh, I, I put out a tweet. I just didn't. I, I forgot to put the Twitter account, the best of our week Twitter account. Okay, but if me, you just want to retweet, yeah, me, yeah, yeah, you, can yeah, just, I, I, you can just hit that. Go, go um, what 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 I think is really telling. I think Xiaomi's play at collaborating is one of the better strategies that we've seen from. I mean, obviously Xiaomi's a major manufacturer, but you know, like it took so much work. Mm -hmm. If you t if you ever listen to an Apple keynote, it's Apple makes the iPhone and Apple makes these amazing products, and you have to really kind of dig into their PR to get like, well, who's helping you with your camera sensors? Oh, right, they're Sony sensors, right? Yeah. Um, what I think is the, Xiaomi is kind of pulling the, the total opposite of that. Their camera tuning is coming from Leica. Their lens manufacturing is coming from Leica. Their sensors are coming from Sony. So and Sony. they are working directly to fund the development. The, the, the IMX 989 exists in part because Xiaomi fronted millions of dollars to help fund the development of that sensor. And, mm -hmm. and even into things like their new display. So the new screen on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is mm -hmm. a collaboration with TCL. TCL, that's so a new now one, this yeah. Is, yeah. This is like, I, I feel like this is so much more legitimizing that they're putting the labels on the phone in the right places to say, we're working with the leaders in these industries to make the best pieces possible, to put them together, to make an ultra experience. And, and that sounds a little like I'm blowing smoke or I'm doing their PR for them, but I think that's refreshing as opposed to trying to pretend that somehow mm -hmm. they're a one-stop shop that did all of this design and all this manufacturing all on their own and no one helped them with it. So I, they, I feel like they, that's... They invited, they, they invented Slicebro. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, they are, <laughs> I mean, for the lack of a better way of describing it realistically, Xiaomi's been on the path. And I say this because it's it it's, it feels Ooh, like you said it before on since path. on the path it it is the way um, you know um, since the eleven since the eleven ultra with the twelve s ultra we've seen their progression we see the direction they're trying to go with once Leica became available they really went head in basically just diving in and working with them very closely and this mm -hmm. is what I really appreciate about this it's no longer this. Um, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There, every company is basically seems like they're, you know, most of the big companies are like tuning in or they're they're working with, you know, Zeiss. Uh, you know, we're we're talking Leica, we're talking Hasselblad. We see the big camera manufacturers in there. Obviously, Canon's not playing in there for any for any reason. But the the 13 Ultra is not only leveraging all the I'm going to call. I'm not going to say mistakes, but I'm going to say the experiments that they've done in the past. But mm -hmm. they've improved them improved upon them so much more. Because when we got the 13 Pro, I honestly didn't see, like, once we got the 989 on the 13 Pro, I felt like, what could they do to one-up the 13 Pro? <laughs> right? What would because, make this an Ultra? Right. Yeah, because the, the last Ultra they did, for me at least, because the, the the 12S Ultra is had its own experiments, right? It, it had the first mm -hmm. one-inch sensor for them, um, and then they made this concept that had a secondary one-inch sensor that you were able to add attachments into it. Sure. So in my mind, I was thinking the 13 Pro embodied what the 13 what the 11 ultra was minus the display where it's the camera experiment uh, experience right. which is that literally what, what it was and then it took what we had last year and it brought it down in a in a, in a, in a notch we were starting to see the ultra features that trickle down to the regular series or the you know the 13 pro essentially uh but then they dropped in with the aperture uh, the ability of controlling every variable aperture in there they mm -hmm. dropped in with uh the build quality the lever the you i mean it, it's, it's a very well-balanced device. So I love I, I the wanna, feel. I want to point this out because sure. I am absolutely that guy who hates that phrase and reviews. Well, it feels really nice in the hand. I know, like, I the know. The reviewer <laughs> is so surprised that a manufacturer designed a phone for an evolved primate with an opposable thumb. I, yeah. I think that is the biggest waste of time. But I do want to say, yeah. um, not so much based on feel, it is more practical than the 12S. Because the sides are flatter, yeah. So it is. It, that's easier what I'm trying to say. It, to it, hold the, every time I grab S. it, it it feels comfortable. Um, 
it doesn't have that whole i have to fiddle with it like i'm i'm trying to like you know between the fingers but yeah but here's the other thing that i want to point out i don't think mm -hmm. this phone photographs as well as it really looks in person because when you look at the press images it looks kind of tacky and especially the way they emphasize the hump the the mm -hmm. the way that it it scoops into the camera module it's a lot I think more it looks it's very terrible it's a lot, in photos exactly it's a lot less but it pronounced. looks really camera like in person so i think it 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 looks better and it feels better in the hand than the <laughs> press photos have <laughs> indicated uh. Everybody, but, make but sure you clip that. We yeah, need to please. clip that in and repost it, um, please. Thank non ironically, um, but but it, on, but it only took him like six part. years from to, to admit that this <laughs> to, <one. laughs> to finally to finally contribute that wisdom of phone design. But but to me, it's it, it it's a um, it's a function above form. Yeah. And oh, absolutely. When 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 I take a Sony out into the field, when I take my Xperia out into the field. I do things with my Sony that I feel more comfortable doing with Sony than I ever do with uh, my Vivos. Because my Vivos are kind of terrifying to mm -hmm. use out in the field and knowing that it's not easy for me to get a repair if I if it slips or I drop it or I, I bust true. that screen. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I trust in a phone with flat sides more than these like ultra thin rail phones, like the, the new V27. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th these phones are so shockingly thin that like you're holding it on just the barest strip of metal. Uh, it, th this is a scary phone to use out in the field, even with the case, because it's yeah. designed to feel so thin. Mm -hmm. um, there's a practicality to the Xiaomi where I don't think it's going to win most attractive phone of the year. I think the Oppo is a better look. The Find X looks like a, a vintage rangefinder camera. It, but if you Xiaomi get it in gold, looks... if you if you get it in the leather, so that's the thing with yeah. the with the for, for the, the one that you're about to hold up, like I feel yeah. like that looks more camera like. But the Xiaomi is is a uh, is a, quick, a nicer, quick, more practical build than I was expecting. Quick little fact, um, and this is just between us people watching. Um, the folks over at Motorola have never seen this phone. And when they okay. saw it, I had a few of them take pictures of it. They're like, I've never seen it in real life. I'm like, <laughs> I, I am very happy you know, to make it happen. But no, see, that's like game recognizes game. You remember? Yeah, no, you that, that's the... just what I'm saying. It's like they know. They they, they realize, yeah. And I'm walking in we with it. The <laughs> surface event and we shot our first reactions video on my 12S Ultra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had two Microsoft engineers come over and like, hey, what's that? <laughs> and, you know, like they ran around their own event with my 12 SL. I have photos. I used photos from them of them taking photos on my 12 You're SL. Right. Ultra. Game recognizes so, game, of I, course. Always. I want to um, throw this comment out because Simon says Hypno asks a great question that I, I, I want to dig into the philosophy of this. the philosophy of this business collaboration, I think, is so critically important. So Simon yeah. says, I wonder if Leica will regret the co collaboration in the long term. So Xiaomi has been so aggressive in handing off the conversation to Leica yeah. because I think Leica legitimizes their photography strategy. Yes. That is a legitimizing impact. And it, mm -hmm. and it means a lot because... You Leica see that in, the, in be... the announcement when they were launching it. There was a, a oh, big presence of Leica. Yeah. And, and multiple videos on YouTube. Like if you mm -hmm. go to the Xiaomi uh, YouTube channel, there yeah. are multiple like, hi, I'm an engineer from Leica and this is what we did for the lenses. Oh, hi, this is how the differences are in vibrant versus authentic versus whatever. But Leica also has, a, it has been working really aggressively over several years now Mm -hmm. to try and develop their own brand identity with end users. Yes, if you know they, they Leica, you know generation. Leica for, for professional camera stuff, but they pushed real hard during the Huawei era mm -hmm. of really trying to legitimize mobile photography solutions for point and shoot cameras and consumers. So now making that transition away from just being sort of in-house with Huawei, Xiaomi became the next best partner for them and i think we're really seeing that because uh, what uh, i want to say it was the p30 or the p p it was the p yeah p, i want to say p40 i don't think it was the p30 that they started with was like the that. p40 the no 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 the last one 
Because I think oh. the P10 was the first one, or P9. Um, I'd have to go digging through it, my stack it's, of phones it's, over there. It's but... been a couple of years that they lost, or is it about a year, at least a year or so, that they lost the exclusivity? Because they had there was an exclusivity between Leica and Huawei. I want to say it was Huawei. P40. So it's it, like I think they 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 switched just before the 12S Ultra. The Mi 12 11. Ultra. The 12, well, the Mi 11 and then there was Ultra like was an not, overlap. Yeah, so Mi no, no, 11, no, Mi 11 Ultra was wasn't not, wasn't bad, but yeah, I think that's yeah. when Leica stopped working with with Huawei and Leica so that would have been two shifted years ago, yeah. to Xiaomi with the 12s Ultra. So 2020, oh, sorry. 2020, yeah, basically too, pandemic, the year of the pandemic. Too, too, too much gadget history there. Yeah. But the the two the two working together, I mm -hmm. think, um, th this is a way that you start up a conversation. Sony doesn't need to do that. Because mm -hmm. Sony is the top dog in mirrorless cameras right now, I yes. think. I think we just heard, we just saw like Sony's hitting like fifty percent of the full frame sensor market, I all on it. their own. Yeah, like not surprised at all. Canon, Nikon, uh, even Panasonic, my my beloved Lumix cameras, all of the other camera manufacturers combined. Yeah equals sony when we're talking full frame well they're they're so, coming out with more and more uh, more sensors and more cameras and stuff in different yeah. categories but yeah but if you're a company like zeiss or a company like leica or even a company that's really exotic like hasselblad you don't have the same relationship with more casual consumers you're known for being um yeah. exotic or Super. ultra tier yeah. professional and yeah. so now i think this is the smartest play that these companies can make because forever cynical we might be mm -hmm. if you compare the the camera output on a on like a mi 10 to okay. a mi 12 we see significant differences in that jpeg processing we see significant yep. differences in those capabilities and we see a very different aesthetic to the end photos just through that collaboration and i'm putting a lot of that on leica because we also saw a similar evolution happen with huawei no. Huawei was doing some really interesting things and then they started doing dual camera and then Leica got on board and their cameras took off. So and, and I don't think anyone's going to going to feel regret long term if no. it, like Xiaomi isn't sitting there thinking like there's Mr. Xiaomi. There's one guy and his name's Xiaomi and he's sitting in a room by himself and he's thinking, you know, what if uh, what if they overshadow us and, and they're not talking about Xiaomi cameras? I don't think that's it. I think it's an endeavor to sell more phones and to sell more camera components and the two together. I mean, my early experiences on the, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra mm -hmm. are wowing me as much as I was wowed on the 12S Ultra. And that felt like a revolutionary step in photography and in composing and creating an image. So I, I think long-term, even if they don't work together forever, the two will be stronger for having had this approach mm -hmm. than if they had been doing separate, you know, so, sort of separate programs or if Leica was kind of dabbling with a bunch of other um, well, manufacturers. Leica doesn't dabble with many companies, but Leica does make their own phones. So they've had yeah. a device out, I think, it's a, if I'm not mistaken, there's yeah, the two generations. Of, no, 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 no. A Leica phone, an actual phone made by Leica. <laughs> there is an actual the, phone. I, I tested it, was, it out. I thought it was a, just a kind of a rebadged uh, Sharp. Uh, hold on, maybe I mean if Leica it was, but phone. they branded it as a Leica phone. No, the, I know it's the Leica Lights. Um, what is it? L L I T Z or something like that. Um, but I, almost, um, I'm, I was Leica pretty wolf. sure it was kind of yeah. built on uh, the the Sharp Aquas. Yeah, it kind of looks like a Sharp. Here. Well, but yeah. So here, right? Yeah, the, the Leica Phone One. The lights phone one, sorry. Yeah, do not sell my mm -hmm. information, please. Uh, the the design, yeah, may have been. <laughs> I'm like reading. I'm reading signs as I'm as I'm getting. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is even though it is a rebranded, but they put, for the lack of a better term, they're putting out a device that has their brand on it. At mm -hmm. some point or another, regardless of where who where they're collaborating, I think it's a beneficial relationship for them to be able to, even if they're learning from Xiaomi, and this is basically just a learning experience for them, and we we as a consumer benefit from getting a device. Oh, yeah. Exactly. that The processing on that device, when I used it in Maui last year, we were sitting at the beach and somebody, one of, one of Qualcomm's PR, uh, and obviously this is a Jap uh, Japan only, this is not intended for the international market. Um, yeah she had the device with her and i just took a few pictures a few snaps of it and it's just so beautiful 
it, it was yeah. obviously tuned more into the vibrant uh, color scheme. It was not a, a more of an authentic style. If I had to compare it to the Ultra and and the 13 Pro, since those are the the reference points that we you know for some some of us here that are in the chat as well, since they've tried them on. I know Jermaine had access to it, uh, and then of course uh, Barry. Um, the biggest difference I think for me right now is. <sighs> I, I, again, I I missed the 12s Ultra. I never got on the the 12s Ultra. So for for my for me Ultra to Ultra, it's 11 Ultra to 13th uh, Ultra. I you know what I mean. I skipped the generation for, uh, because again, where we had the uh, you and I got a chance to play with the 11 Ultra. The 12s Ultra for me has been more of I wished and I wanted to, uh, but unfortunately, you made the decision. I think you made the much better decision than I did to to be able to dabble into that. I'll say that uh, my decisions back last year to go into Samsung only and all of that 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 came in by it, far. That's I'm I'm really glad that I did mm -hmm. um, because I got to borrow your Mi 11, and I really like yeah, what yeah. that did for stills. I was a mm -hmm. little I was a little concerned about some of their the the video processing on the A88, but when I picked up the 12s Ultra and it was rocking the 8 plus Gen 1, uh, um, yes, it, it, that was it the right move. Really, it, I mean, it, it really put together all the pieces in a way that made sense to me. That this was a different conversation. This is a phone for someone who has uh, a certain type of composition in mind, uh, uh, appreciates uh, a different kind of capability, and is willing to relearn. I think that's the biggest thing, and I'm sure you can, uh, from you having played with Vivos and, and that new Oppo, mm -hmm. the phone changes your approach to taking a photo. Oh, absolutely. We, we, we talk about this because we ultimately find that it's a positive, mm -hmm. but every single time you, you change, you, you radically change a component like a camera yeah. sensor, it has an impact on how you look at a scene. And for a lot of people that I feel are super, super casual in pulling a phone out of their pocket and just pushing the shutter button, I, I feel there's room in there for some frustration. Yeah. Um, because if you don't nail the point that you want to take a photo of, you end up with a softer, or blurrier photo. And so with the 12S Ultra, to me, felt like you know, we're kind of taking the training wheels off. Mm -hmm. This is a phone that has some great AI capabilities. Vivo have some of the most mind-blowing auto and, and image processing capabilities. Like all this stuff is really, really cool. Yeah. But you step up to a one-inch sensor and it feels like you're moving from the kid's table to the grown-up's table. I, and, it, and it feels a, a, a lot like the phone version of going from like a point and shoot camera to a nice interchangeable lens system. Like, yeah, oh, start exactly. Oh, this is, I've got credibility now. <laughs> yeah, I've well, arrived. <laughs> and, and, and I can, and I can see, I can see where sometimes the, the, the jump may be a little bit scary. It's like, you know, it's like, I know how to drive a, you know, uh, like a, yeah. a regular sedan and a regular car all, all you know, all day oh, yeah. long. I've driven cars all day long, but then put them in a Maserati or put them in a Lambo and you're like, Oh yeah. Oh, this is too much car for me. Yeah. And, and, and you, 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 you will get I've that. Handed yeah, I, I've handed like the the larger sensor phones to some of my iPhone using family and friends, and you do not get better photos from them because there's a feel. If you're it, used to the pixel feel, you're yeah. really good at nailing a good shot from your pixel. If you're yeah. used to the iPhone feel, you're really good at nailing the shot you want from an iPhone. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you put something in someone's hand, that looks like this, they're immediately intimidated. Even if it's just like push the circle, just like you always do. The circle is the button and you push the button and the picture yep. shows up. Yep. And that changes. It, there's you, you, they don't have an expectation on what it feels like to shoot a photo from that. And you end up with a poorer shot because of that lack of familiarity. So yeah. it, it, it's really been from the 12, from the Mi 11, the Mi 11 mm -hmm. Ultra to now on the 13 Ultra, it really has been a wonderful educational experience exactly. where every year, both of us have been digging into the nuance of camera specs, the nuance of lens design, mm -hmm. uh, all, all of the companion sensors. There's been that arms it, race. Been, yeah. Better, better focus on add. the companion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're not just all focusing on one. This is one of the few areas, and I feel you would probably agree with me. This is one of the few areas where I feel like I'm back in college and I'm learning about some of this high end technology in a yep. way that I wasn't, if or I wouldn't have been 
for the last several years of just kind of the American phones that show up. Yeah, um, unfortunately, know, right? that feels like we've been in more of a holding pattern. It's so it, it's a such a hard conversation to explain to people, but it's yeah, it, you're right. We have been in a massive holding pattern. A lot of people not as excited about every year's new generational upgrade. Okay, so we went to a 200 megapixel camera, but the reality is it's really not that much better than what you had with the S22. There's a lot of conversations going around, but again, the selections are very small. You have the reliable pixel where you get shots that you know exactly how they're going to come out, but you're right. If you're comfortable with a specific, and I like to call it the color science, really, it's like what your eyes trained to see. This is why yeah. when you jump into, especially for reviewers, well, when you're jumping from one phone to another. I will fight you on this real quick. Okay. Just real quick. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it's more than just, for me, mm -hmm. it, I am O. Uh -huh. um, it, it's more than just the expected color science. The nuance of the haptic pulse on the shutter button. Yeah, no, will no, change no, I... someone's reaction to whether or not they feel they took the photo. The the potential shutter lag on a Samsung, yeah. if someone mm -hmm. has trained themselves to get good shots from a Samsung, they are anticipating a moment more on a Samsung than they are on a Pixel. That, that's you a familiar. So, that's more of a familiar. That's familiar what I mean. Familiarity the of, whole of... familiarity of the entire function of the phone. That if I put a Xiaomi. In a in an iPhone user's hands, yeah, literally the feel of how the software responds to a tap on the screen is enough mm -hmm. to intimidate them, and I'll end up with a poorer photo for that lack of familiarity. Sorry, I just wanted to 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 elaborate count. on that one. Because yeah, no, no, I, 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 feel I like it. We we take it for granted when we're familiar with something, mm -hmm. and then we act like a company that makes something a little bit different has made it wrong. And that's how I, we we see that kind of logical fallacy play out in in less tech savvy reviews. Absolutely, and 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 I and I and I agree with you to I think to a certain aspect of it. And I'm not. It's, it's not an argument. And if it is going to be a beef, this would be the beef I'd love to get into. Oh, you we'll, we'll settle it. Guns at dawn, man. That's, absolutely, that's cool. absolutely. Sun, dawn, really? <laughs> okay, I was going to do it at sunset, but sure. You want to wake up early? That's fine. Uh, right. No, no. Um, what what I um, what I wanted to kind of I explain the. Um, and I, I, I'm almost gonna. Uh, it, it is the okay. So I lost my trail of thought there. Okay, we we threw a joke. Yeah, in sorry. There. I knew I knew I was gonna kind of sidetrack us there. But but uh, looking it, at it's... how. Oh, sorry. It, so no no so it's it, so, okay. I'll shut up. No 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 no. It, uh, just to kind of uh, <laughs> bring it into the the camera feel. It, so this is one of the th one of the things, especially for us that we review devices. Okay, I, I, I sorry. I remember now. My biggest point whenever I make a video about anything is not to try to say this is better than that. I mm -hmm. try to judge a device by the promise of the company's performance and by how the device performs. Any device, any car, any toy that you buy and you try for the first time, there is a learning curve. And we have to go through that. And that, there is that familiar, familiar, you know, I'm comfortable with a stick shift. I'm comfortable with an automatic. I'm comfortable being able to just hold my phone, double, you know, pressing and walk away knowing what I got. That's the, that's one part of the experience, and I feel like everybody will feel that because if you hand somebody a Sony that they've been using Canon for so long, they're going to fumble figuring out how to get the shot right that, right out of the box. Give them a day, Truth. it's a better experience. Yeah. But in, in that casual experience where you do, let's say if we do hand this down to a person, they're probably going to get a much better experience running on a Find X6 Pro than it is with a Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Why? Mm -hmm. This is designed to be more of the point and shoot. It's, it's designed yeah. that. And if you want to dial it in and go more, Hasselblad does give us some options. But that's and, the tuning. And in the opposite side of Xiaomi, I would say there's an even higher intimidation factor when you step up to a Vivo. Absolutely. Like, a Vivo, Vivo's Vivo camera is like... app is, is wonderfully cluttered. Oh yes, I, I mean it's like you've got to work that you've got to it's work. It's like a Vivo it's like back in the week. LG days for me. Like it reminds me of how 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 like you, you go into an LG app. I'm like, oh crap, what did I just you, sign up you, for? Like you. <laughs> You I'm not saying that is see... a bad thing. Yeah. No, see, it's so wonderful because it's it's kind of deliciously messy. Um, yeah. You, you, it's like a goulash of a camera app. And, and it you, takes you a, can it see... takes a day or two to get used to. Yeah, it's not a point oh, and shoot. On yeah. the X70, with the X70, when I when I first started rocking with that phone, I did oh, not feel qualified class. to talk about that camera for almost two weeks because yeah. I could not. You you had like six different flavors of auto mode processing. So you, if you did HDR versus their um, Zeiss, their Zeiss, uh, yeah, Zeiss yeah, so color, so you Zeiss could color. pair 
literally yeah. six different flavors of, of auto. And so you're like, until I can reasonably predict yeah. what a shutter press is going to do, I can't make a camera review about this phone. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is, it, it's too much. But as soon as you do start getting familiar with how Vivo does it, you can see yeah. every engineering decision. It logically makes, makes sense with experience, mm -hmm. but it is not designed to be as helpful or as, as like, uh, as accessible as an Oppo. Yeah. Like and, and, and I think that's so that's... much more, um, like the, the Oppo auto mode is so much more accessible, but then you can go a step further and say, well, yeah, like a pixel or an iPhone is going to be even more streamlined than that. So this whole spectrum yeah. is, is kind of geared. Like you might see the absolute best cameras on the Xiaomi 13 ultra. And it will, and it could still have completely the wrong aesthetic, color processing, and uh, app organization for yeah. you to want to use it. And, and like, and that that to me is what's so wonderful that even with these mega camera sensor phones, there is no mm -hmm. winner. Yeah. Well, Each no, one no of exactly. These is bringing a wildly different experience to the table, which makes it a little bit. It makes it more intriguing on how to be able to tell the story around the conversation there, like the battle of the one in sensors. It the reality, but it's like th you know three different three different things that you have to kind of classify, categorize, and explain maybe how it fits to whomever's looking for it. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at these devices, these are cameras with the with phones around them. This is <laughs> yeah. why you would get the 13 Ultra. Yeah. This is why you'd get the Find X6 Pro. This is why you would get the uh, X90 Pro or Pro Plus. You don't get them because they do phone things. You just don't. And if you do, I don't know why. I like You really get them because you want to get you you are an enthusiast of photography. You're in, you're in, you're enthusiast in creating content, editing content, producing content on the device, and being able to do like it is so nice not to have to walk around to. Don't get me like I, I haven't done it for a year and a half to walk into any <laughs> event and not have to lug around my a DSLR with all of the. No, I have a Joby yeah. and a and my phone. I set it out and I and 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 you'll see in some of the videos coming up. You know, I'm not saying I shot videos for Moto thing. I shot some videos mm. for another video that I'm working on while I was at the uh, in Chicago. So there is going to be content there shot there straight up the uh, basically the Vivo or you know I still prefer Vivo for video. I'll be honest with you. I like the video on the Ooh, X90 Pro uh, the Find X6 fired. Pro. But if I have to kind of put the two together, like I would still I still gravitate a little bit more to the Vivo video processing over right. what I get from the Find X6 Pro. Although on on photo side I'll flip all the other side right away. The Find X6 Pro for me right now is where it is where it's at. And it, right. I actually like it, and this is going to sound like I'm hating, but, but I actually like it more than my Pixel. Like, Pixel is good, <laughs> I, but Find I, X6 I Pro I, is, I you don't know. think that's hating. Again, no, we're it's just saying preferences it, it's, and stuff, it's a preferencing. But... It, it, I, I've, I mean, I had, for, for, the, for the longest time, I had my Pixel 7 Pros. My SIM was in it. And yeah. I, I truly believed in it. I mean, remember, we had this conversation. You okay. decided to go with the Sony. I decided to go with my Pixel 7, which was just mm -hmm. more of a decision there. But when you look at it, it's like, you know, the device that you decide to put your SIM to live with on a daily basis, it's the phone that you're going to grab when you want to take that picture of your kid. It's the phone yeah. that you're going to grab when you're walking around and you need to take that image of whatever thing that you want to take a picture of it. So bringing it back to the 13 Ultra, what I really loved about the fact is I think it, the reality at the end of the day is like for the last four days right now, I haven't really had the need, I haven't had the urge to put it down and just go straight to the Find X6 Pro. Although I had it in my pocket, I, I only took pictures because I was comparing it, but for the most part, I kept going back to the uh, to the, um, yeah. you know, the 13 Ultra. The, um, I, I'll say this, MIUI 14, really nice. Like the, the, the good, UI, the, the, yeah. The, yeah, the the fluidity between uh, jumping between apps, opening everything. The camera app launches very nicely. I like the organizations mm -hmm. of things. I would probably say if there was one thing I would have loved for is I'd love to if the aperture was actually sitting outside of the menu system as opposed did, to having did me. Did you play with the phone at all on the, the earliest? Like, so you know how the phone will prompt you because there was that initial was that immediate update, update, yeah. update, right? Yeah, exactly. Did I got you. The, did you play with the camera before that? No, because remember, I it got it. I, I got it, it Sunday. <laughs> I was it on had Sunday a dedicated night. Dedicated aperture button. Oh, that's what. Okay, so and then I went and updated it, and you're like, "Oh no, 
it's a new menu. The, it's a two-step for was. now. Yeah. Oh. You know, actually, I take that back. I want to say yes. I did see it there. I and shot it was like. It was confusing I shot me like why 30 was... or 40 photos before I yep. saw the little pop up that there was. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. An, uh, an I update, typically. Uh, a so, day one update for uh, it. Typically, with most devices that I get that are specifically, there, especially if they're early before available for the public, the first thing I always do is install the updates because whatever they've done, whatever they push in the update, it typically fixes 90% of what hiccups I may yeah. notice in the initial. Yeah, for sure. And I've had those. So. With the amount of time that I had on Sunday night, I didn't want to have to do the update on the plane. I didn't want to do the update in Chicago. Yeah. You know, you hit the ground running. Last thing you want to do is trying to fiddle. But I was I was stoked. And like I pull it up and you're like, oh, there's a dedicated little button for the aperture. This is gonna be great. And then it, it went was away. Great. And you're like, but where did it go? And then I opened up the menu and like, oh, that's the worst place to put it. I'm I'm right there with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but I think for me, it if anything, it I guess if 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 I have to kind of look for the positive in it, it slows us down. Right, it ta it makes you slow down so that you can think about what you're trying to do. Do you really no, want to change the aperture? No, no, no thinking. No. <laughs> just do and go. Just do. And they should no, no. Seriously, yeah. Awesome. There, they should have been an option. Uh, oh man, look at that. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna look at some iris uh, goodness right there. Hopefully, snook, <laughs> snook, snook, <laughs> snick, snick. Uh, so, so we've yeah. got another question here that I do want to cover from Malik. Uh, sure. Would you say that this is a good alternative? I think he means a good alternative to the Ricoh GR3 if you are looking for a street photography camera. Okay, that's a good question. Although I don't know the GR, the I have not, I'm not familiar with that camera. Let's yeah, bring let me it, pull up. it up and we can, we yeah, can yeah, check yeah. it out. That would be the best because um, I like Rico a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Rico GR. Oh, GR3. Three. Three. Yeah. So let's see. I did a lot of street it's photography not, with little, it in Chicago. It's not a little range finder. What is it? Specifications. Um, 24 megapixels, but what mm -hmm. size, what type sensor? Uh, 23, what is it, 23 millimeter by 15, that's APS-C. Is that what we're looking at? It, it doesn't look like it's a full frame, but I, mean, I can't see that picture. No, full, full frame would be somewhere like 34 millimeters across, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's APS-C, which is going to be an advantage over a one-inch type sensor. A one-inch type sensor sensor performance mm -hmm. is nipping at the heels of micro four-thirds cameras. A micro four-thirds camera, the sensor crop factor is a crop factor of two. Yeah. Um, the one-inch sensor is a crop factor of like two point six, and the effective APS. bend pixel size on all of these one inch type sensors is the same as my Lumix G9 and it's slightly larger per pixel uh, pixel pitch than yeah. the GH6. So okay. the sensor performance is ex is exceptionally close to micro four thirds. APS-C is still gonna have an advantage and of course obviously full frame is gonna have an advantage over that. What Where I would say the phone might still be preferable in terms of street uh, street photography. The uh, the effective focal length. What what is because I don't think it's much of a zoom. I can't see what the zoom is. Um, go into the smaller telephotos because mm -hmm. there are two two distinct telephotos that could maybe give you a slightly more uh, discreet look if you're trying to do like street photography more cinema verite style you know mm -hmm. you're trying to capture a slice of life further away where you're not observed by yeah. your subject um that might be a little bit a little bit more practical uh i don't know i i i, I have a hard time with this because if you're really so into dedicated cameras for street photography you have probably picked specific hardware pieces that accomplish that but with mm -hmm. the ubiquitousness of phones I find even a phone that looks ridiculous, like one of these camera sensor phones, uh, one inch type sensor phones, they still don't stand out as much as even a little bridge or street camera like this. So I, I, I would still say like, you know, a camera like this Ricoh GR3, probably gonna take some photographic wins over uh, the, the, the 13 Ultra, but your Image quality is going to be very good, probably mm -hmm. not matching this, but very good. Your ability to 
edit, to uh, process, to upload, to share your photography is instant. So no matter how good the shot is on your GR3, you have to move it off the camera <laughs> there, there's the, the, with the process yeah there's the flexibility that you get with the smartphone which i think it, is always going to be yeah i'd be willing to get to bet that the xiaomi is going to destroy this thing for video yeah so, i wouldn't i wouldn't um, doubt it h.264 mov yeah it's 1080p 60. Yeah, yeah. So, no, this is street photography cameras are not designed for video. They're designed to have, you know, video options for like that one time that you want. But yeah, it, it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, I'd say you got to step up to like, uh, what's the new ZV? Um, the, full uh, frame the, e, Sony, the E1, the E1. I'd say yeah. you have to step up to that to, uh, to find a vlogging camera that's really gonna, gonna take that out. Yeah, it, and and that runs a one inch sensor on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bionic Scoop is saying, yeah, that is APS-C. So if uh, 23 millimeters across is an APS-C sensor. Yeah, yeah. So what is exactly. that? It's like a crop factor of 1.5. So, I mean, that's a pretty, I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a pretty significant change from a crop factor of 2.6. So, yeah, those, those sensors really aren't going to compare directly like that head to head. But, uh, yeah, uh, if I, d I did the math, the equivalent field of view and the look of the bokeh, like the background blur on the one inch type sensors is somewhere around a 23 millimeter lens at f 4.5 on a full frame camera. Mm -hmm. um, and that's shockingly shallow. I, I mean, if you, you pull up for street photography, you, you are hard separating your subject from the environment mm -hmm. um, at f 4.5. That is that is a distinct look uh, separating subject from background. And we're doing that on a phone now, which just completely blows my mind. Yeah. No, no, I, I think it's a good, a good, uh, a good rundown. I think it sounds like a pretty good option. I mean, if you want to check it out, obviously it's there's there's positives and negatives for everything. But the reality when you're looking at it is it, it's either you have this as a companion to your phone, but you have to connect it to your PC to edit and can upload and share the content. And if that's not a priority for you, then you know it depends on what your what your I guess it, it it depends if you already have it or if you're good shopping. Maybe that's a better question. If you have it yeah. and you're upgrading from it, would that yeah, make still? I if you already have the GR3, then what I would say is pair it with something streamlined and uh, some, something like a Pixel 6a, mm -hmm. right? If you already have a $1,000 street photography solution like this GR3, which is probably a, a, a monster stills in the field, um, low profile kind of mm -hmm. camera, hook it up with a phone that's gonna be equally discreet, inexpensive since you already have the camera, but it's still going to have a good kind of point and shoot experience. You don't need to overlap so much with like an ultra tier thousand dollar phone to match your thousand dollar street photography camera. Absolutely. No, no, I'm with you. Yeah, exactly. It is. And I see tech loving mamas in the chat. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> but um, so I'll probably ask the, the obvious questions. Have you played with the video option uh, on this, the video output? Did you play oh, with yeah. desktop mode? Uh, have you tried so, playing desk desktop mode was fundamentally broken thanks to Android Absolutely. 13. Yep. Uh, well, uh, I mean wait, I, when you say broken, did it work for you at all? Yes. I got black screen. I didn't even get I couldn't so, even get yeah. it to turn on. Okay. But I got black screen, but you can get the mouse cursor working if you hook it up to something with like a mouse or a trackpad or something like yeah. that. So it is functional, mm -hmm. but the the app drawer is just gone. Mm -hmm. um, there is no app drawer button. So like on a Sony or on a OnePlus on Android 13, you at least have an app drawer button, but when mm -hmm. you click it, it is non-functional. So yeah. you get this weird strip, but you can't really see any of the apps installed on the phone. Um, here, we don't even have the app drawer. I installed uh, Taskbar, Brayton mm -hmm. Farmer uh, is the developer. Taskbar, totally free application. It adds like a strip a dock mm -hmm. so that you can get into another app drawer. And I started opening apps there. And unfortunately it is very much like uh, Android 13 on the Xperia. You can open the app, but then there is no window header for you to move the window around or full size it to maximize it or yeah. to close it. So you can open it and it opens exactly in the spot where it opens and then it just stays there forever until you disable the desktop mode. And that's it. So unfortunately, that's not, it's not working. Functional. Yeah. Um, we, we need to see Google offer anything 
that will improve the experience of till til they support X video out. I don't know if they they will. I mean, that that has to be a, a substantial. That has to be no, the, I, the the move for them. I'm putting this on Google because I think Google's strategy has been so tablet focused on the way that we finger swipe with gestures to get mm -hmm. floating windows and side by side working that yeah. they broke the window header that you would normally interact with with a mouse. Mm -hmm. So I think exactly. that I think that part's on Google. If we want to have a tablet where you the expectation is you're going to put uh, connect a mouse to it, we need to see Android get smarter about floating windows that actually have the right controls at the top of the window. Yeah. And then maybe that'll improve the desktop mode. But that doesn't seem to be Google's push. Google's push is we want to sell more tablets and the vast majority like the, the number of people who are going to use a mouse are woefully low. So we're not going to see that kind of polish. I don't no, think we're going to uh, see that kind of approach in the in the tablet UI. Well, well okay. So we'll have to see how they approach the tablet UI with the, uh, the uh, Pixel tablet. Uh, the Pixel Pad or Pixel Tab or the, the tablet basically Whatever that they promised us in Q1, but now is in middle of Q2. IO is next week. And I think the reality is, you know, we're, we're expecting the Pixel 7a to be announced or at least showcased. The uh, tablet for sure, since we already saw it, and then probably a <laughs> teaser if they did if they do what they did last maybe. year to the Pixel uh, Pixel Eight Pro and Pixel Eight, uh, and if maybe there is a watch or a continuation. I, I feel like if they're going, if they've learned anything from last year, is that what they, the recipe they did last year was very nice. They they beat all the leakers ahead of their ahead of them and just kind of went there, but. With the rumors that we're talking about, the fact that you know there's a Pixel tab, there's a Pixel foldable, there's a, and then of course with the tablet coming out, larger form factor displays are becoming a thing that Google's trying to also cover and sell. So they are going to have to figure out some approach other than just stretching the standard UI, going back to what they used to do with the Pixel Seven, like the uh, what's it called, the Tab S, the Tab Seven, or you know back when they used to make tablet back, I guess. Which was the essentially a, a, a phone UI, but I don't know on a bigger scale. It wasn't really mm -hmm. tablet esque. Like we didn't have tablet features specifically. Um, but it kind of bummed me out. Yeah, I, I was happy to have video out, and I was using video out very well. But I couldn't use like I was hoping to get something working when using it with a rocket with a rocket because it was such a big display that you can throw things on. Uh, that it kind of bummed me that I got the black screen there and I was like, crap, this is not functional. So I went back and turned it <laughs> off. But yeah. um, it's it is such a I don't know why I'm so happy that they gave us a feature. It's like because typically you know companies take features away; mm -hmm. they don't add things in. So um, it 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 just overall for me as far as the performance on this phone, with the exception that it didn't come with GMS, which we need to sideload, and that was super easy by the way. If you guys have ever yeah. you know imported devices, so literally my, very. mine 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 got sent in and I did the update and without even thinking. You're like, hey, I just want to make sure I'm starting totally fresh. Let me just nuke this phone. Oh no! Hi. So I had to set up everything and like reinstall. But I I I, I was texting TK like, hey, there isn't anything weird that has to happen with a Xiaomi, right? And he was like, no, like, dude, just nope. install Google Play. You're like. But like all the Google services and stuff? No, just it's install on Google, Google Play, Play Store. It's fine. Skip. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Skip to any any stop and go straight to you know. Yeah, no. Um <laughs> the the reality is nowadays, even though they're not they don't they don't sell these devices with it, Google mm -hmm. services are in there. They just don't turn them oh, on yeah. by adding a Google Play Store. So, so I, I yeah. I'll lean into that one because we are both using the Chinese ROM phones. Exactly. And I, I am looking at this mostly as a field computer that can accomplish content creation. And I'm not putting much other personal information into my 12S Ultra or into my 13 Ultra. Yeah, and when when we see like if there's a global ROM, there, so yeah, once a, this a, is going a to go ultra gonna, goes global, exactly, I'll, I'll flash it over and I'll probably feel a little bit more comfortable maybe trying to use it like a standalone I, phone. I'm, right I'm now it is purely way. a companion device, and 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 I will agree with you on that as well. And I, we have heard from them that it is coming up internationally. What we had right now is both of us are using the Chinese edition uh, version. Which I still feel like we'll probably get more love and probably get more updates than the yeah. international variant of any device, but that, that, that's just yeah. me, you know, <laughs> Vivo. Anyways, but that's not the point. <laughs> uh, no, I I really love it, but I always like it bums me out. Like Grant, so yeah, it's their one of our friends turf, we know man. is 
Grant yeah. keeps getting updates on his on his on his, uh, on his X90 Pro Plus and the X9. I mean, yeah, we did like, get an hey, update. There's this there's this new like uh, there's, there's this new, new like, watermarking here. feature, and you're like, and like no, 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 there isn't. <laughs> And and I and I have a feeling that a good part of that I could be it could be MediaTek it could be because we're using a Dimensity over we're using a Qualcomm maybe. and maybe they're able to push more things but I'm thinking features in the camera functional features in the camera should not be limited I mean the architecture between the HN2 and the X uh, and the 9200 is not that different that you shouldn't be able to with the right support from MediaTek to actually get these features to push out but anyways long, what I'm trying to say essentially is the there is a good chance we probably will get a lot more support. The Find X6 Pro, it's been getting updates and getting better and better, literally, mm -hmm. as time goes on. Um, and that's one of the things for me, at least with the 13 Ultra. I, I want to live with this for at least a full week before putting anything or starting to put anything out. I have content. I've been shooting content, I and I've been sharing mm -hmm. some of that online. I think I just posted a whole bunch of pictures from uh, Chicago on Instagram this morning um, uh, for my trip to with, with Moto. They're all on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. You know, yeah. I just felt weird putting, you know, a post thanking Moto and then at the bottom of that saying, shot on. <laughs> it just shot on felt a little bit tacky. So I did not credit <laughs> the camera, but I assume, you know, anybody that follows me knows that, you know, it, it is going to be literally like the phone I reach for. Yeah. Um, it just, uh, it, yeah. It's going to be another one. I'm going to have to be careful. I am wrapping up the Patreon deep dive for the Vivo X90 Pro camera. Yeah. I really wanted to wait for a couple updates and it took us a long time to get two major or two significant updates. Um, camera updates. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent a lot of time just kind of getting a feel for what it does. And I feel there's an interesting conversation for the X90 Pro where you want to kind of treat it like an ultra tier phone, but it's really not. It's mm -hmm. really not built to go head to head against like a, a Galaxy Note 23. It's not priced to go head to head mm. against a Note 23. But then it's got a very exotic feature that feels like it's batting above its price tag. And it's a you know roughly a thousand dollar phone. So that should hopefully be going out tomorrow on the Patreon. It's gonna mm -hmm. be about a 25, maybe 30 minute uh, camera review, kind of digging into all the nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. Picking up both of these phones now, the the Vivo aesthetic versus the Xiaomi aesthetic, I can I can now make a very targeted decision. Like, hey, if I'm shooting in these kinds of conditions, like the Vivo is probably going to serve me better. But over here, I maybe want to uh, stick with the Xiaomi because of whatever this might be. Mm -hmm. the The Xiaomi 13, I'm going to have to be really careful. I, I feel like I'm already using it more than I'm reviewing it. Like, I've only had it for about two days now and it's already started filling in as the b-roll camera and i've already shot a talking head video on it and like i should be spending more time reviewing reviewing it, it. like no, testing I, it and, it's and exactly it out what happened to me with the x90 pro i got it and i got so excited to use it you that it ended up becoming start jumping in on and it. i still yeah. use it daily it's it's literally on like I showed up to this and, and they were like asking, you know, like, which phone is that? I'm like, that's the X90 Pro. And which that one? Like, seriously, I, I walk in and I, I and but you're, you're right. I know exactly the shot that I want to be able to get with the with the Vivo. And I know when I pull that device out over when I want to pull out, let's say, uh, the you know, Find X6 Pro. And right now I'm like, seriously, I have not had the urge to go back when I'm going on on a daily basis to pull out the the X90 Pro, or sorry, the Find X6 Pro or, or the Vivo. Not because I don't like them, it's because I really want to force myself to live in that ecosystem. If mm -hmm. I keep relying on something else mm -hmm. and not actually trying to learn how to use the tool correctly, or at least learn how to how to uh, understand the pr the production that is going to come out of it, you're truly not reviewing the device. You're living in with a clutch. You're always like, "Well, if it doesn't work, well, that's <laughs> fine. You know, it's okay. This one does it better." I, that's not what I want to do. Um, I've learned a lot and I've taken a lot of bad pictures. I'm not going to deny the fact that there, not everything has been coming out great. And, but every time I take oh, a bad glorious. picture, uh, I, I, but <laughs> every mistake you make, you learn, yeah. you move on and you adapt. Um, and, and like I said, and then going through the camera app, just to understand all the different modes of different functionalities. Like, and when I found that transcribe function to me, it was just a joke. They was like, what do you mean transcribe? 
And it was like, I, and I did the video and I went in there. I was like, oh, this is such an easy thing. You shoot, you edit, you get the whole thing, upload it in there. And you don't even have to download CapCut. You don't have to do any fancy stuff. Yeah. In app, on device, first party, always better. So, so yeah, for good. me. Yeah. And, no, and no, again, yeah. even even on top of like we just, it was last week, we were talking about the DaVinci Resolve update. And like, oh, it's so <laughs> magical. I've got like speech to text built into Resolve. Like, it's built into my camera now. It, <laughs> It, we need to leverage AI oh, functionalities. We so really good. are behind. I mean, AI can be very helpful if it's used in the right way and as opposed to well, being like, you know, to but cover. Tell me, but tell me, it hasn't been exciting. Um, like, for example, yeah. uh, we can always point to a Sony as mm -hmm. being a camera company that never does the bells and whistles. There's so little fun mode stuff like AR sticker emojis or anything like that. They Sony's, used to though. They used to. This is no, the no, weird no. part. Right now, yeah, yeah. now right they now, don't. Yeah, yeah, I know. They're under the alpha team, and they're like, no, go, go the Z, away. The, um, the Z series back in the day, my son used to love their. Yeah, they used mode. to have all kinds of really fun stuff. Great. Yeah, a lot of AR not anymore. Stuff. Oh, yeah. That that yeah. is not what they're about. Now. Olden and, days, and, back in the old but, days. But they're taking all of that AI compute performance, yeah, and tuning it to do things like. Hey, that guy is sprinting down the track and he's about to cross the finish line and you're about to take a photo of him running full speed and we locked focus on his eyeball while using the telephoto sensor shooting 4K at 120 frame per second video. So you're like AI AI tuning having a tangible practical effect. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Vivo is the opposite. Like, let's see if we can use AI to tune the background blur to make it look like a Zeiss Biotar lens from the 1970s yeah. with swirl bokeh. You know, like, it, they actually changed the shape of the bokeh balls in AR, like an AR AI processing kind of way. It, it's an incredible, it's an inordinate amount of compute power to make it look like I've got a 1970s uh, affected sloppy piece of glass, <laughs> like a film lens from like an old gr grindhouse feature. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. Vivo's pushing radically in that direction. So it, it, it's still refreshing to see that uh, machine learning and uh, AI hasn't just become like beauty mode filtering or something like that. You've got compute power that is being underutilized. So what can we do with it? Why don't we use some of these AI cores and these machine learning cores? Why don't we do speech to text? You already have real time transcription in something. I was going like to say, yeah, Google is already Pixel. built into the OS. Yeah, exactly. And they, well, they're... If, if it's got, it costs us a few processor cycles and maybe you can't do it with HDR plus 10 bit color, whatever. You've got to turn that off. But, but, then but you wouldn't. It's... You wouldn't be shooting a video with transcription. We find that, that if you're trying to do that at that level, exactly. Those those two scenarios would never cross. It's like I want to shoot in ten. You know, uh, yeah, no, I, I want to shoot in ten bit. But no, please give me transcription in the middle of that video <laughs> uh, because that's the shot that I'm going to be posting to Instagram at low quality or at compressed video and stuff. Sure. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It, it's it's a tough conversation, but the the approach there is, I think. Sony's approach has been very camera-like. Like you said it yourself, it's mm -hmm. alpha. They're under the alpha branch now. They don't they don't play like a smartphone. They're playing like a camera. They're playing like a DSLR. So if you've used an alpha, this makes perfect sense to you. And this is where it transitions <laughs> to. And every year over year, we've seen that. The this is Raj. Fact, quote, yeah. Raj, uh, we have so much compute power, we can take you back to the 1970s. <laughs> yeah, baby. Well, it, because that's... I Maybe but we peaked at the 70s. Maybe maybe we peaked in the 70s when it came to uh, photography. I, I really... I feel like I need to show some of that stuff off more. I talk about it in, in the review that's going to be hopefully coming out tomorrow. What Vivo has done with... Um, have, have you tried the effects master mode? No, I haven't. Um, on oh, the man. I, I, I got I got to fire this up. I, okay. I, I got to show this off. This is... Because, again, so, like, the Vivo... You're, you're yeah. seeing like my hand here. I'm actually going to just kind of change this up here a little so I've got a little more room. So without blocking the camera sensors. So your normal viewfinder mode here on the Vivo is lovingly complex and dirty with all of this stuff. And then you tap yeah. another menu and even more like features and modes and controls come out. Yeah. And then Effects Master gives you full screen cross swipe controls. Now that sounds intimidating 
but mm-hmm. it's so much faster. So you tap on something and then you go, hey, I want to make it brighter. And anywhere on the screen, you swipe vertically and that changes your exposure, except for when I accidentally hit the, the edge of the camera, the phone screen and swipe out. So let me do that again. So vertical, when I'm not looking at that, just super, super fast. Mm-hmm. There's not any target because yeah. that's the big problem is you tap to focus and then you get like a tiny little slider and you've got the a little like, sundial. Yeah move that little sundial and then if you skip a little bit the phone treats that as like another another tap focus, to focus. and exactly. then you've lost your exposure so now what you can also do is sl- swipe horizontally I'm, I'm setting up the the speech detection here um and let's say you want black and white you just oh, swipe jumping horizontally between the different, yeah the different filter. and it completely changes your your saturation mm-hmm. so in one cross swipe you can very quickly say hey i want to go bright and i want to go colorful done yeah, and, no, and no, see, again, you. this is using all of that filter hardware because usually you go through a menu of filters and you can pick different black and white and color and all that fun stuff. And, and now we're using that that extra compute power that those extra machine learning cycles that yeah. are, they're going underutilized for the most accurate swiping. This camera like is now super discerning in the differences between what's a tap and what's a swipe so that you can really get in there and control your color and exposure. I've never seen anything like it. I got to turn this it on. The, yeah, first, I didn't... the first version of it and it works perfect. <laughs> was that one in the last update that we got? Was, or was there? That was yeah. in the last update. Okay, good, good. So good. I got it. I got to check it out. Yeah, no, I, I've been, it, 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 well, actually I was telling you, probably it is a lot helpful. I think for me, most of the time what I do is, I do play around with that little sundial and then I try to lock it. Like I try to lock the exposure in, in, that, yeah. in that area so that it and, doesn't keep changing. Yeah. And it kills me because as soon as your like finger kind of skips, you refocus you and then you've got to yeah. set the exposure all over again. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, it, it, it's well, it's, it's part of learning it. And I think the good thing is that they're trying to put in more intuitive modes that make more sense. The ability of not having to worry where the button is, but exactly like know where it's kind of like when you go into Netflix, Netflix has used to have functional options where you have to kind of click the volume and change the volume. Now, if you swipe from the right and left, you have brightness and volume at different things. And you can just swipe from those, you know, the areas on your device. So I, I'm, I have to check it out. That's nice. It's definitely uh, much nicer yeah, than having to play control. with that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, um, I, I shot a whole bunch got... of my B-roll on the ro- the Rocket video straight on it. Um, some of it was done with <laughs> with a very poorly placed um, uh, barf bag on a plane just to be able to, because I didn't I wasn't <laughs> able to put my tripod. I, it was it was just too. There were so many people on the flight, and I was yeah. like, and I was the dude that was like, I don't know, like people were looking like, what is he doing with that? Yeah, if you've ever done this where you've used the uh, the bag yeah. on the plane as uh, a makeshift phone holder. So uh, trying to use that and then trying to get it to actually shoot the right angle because the chair in front of you is not sitting straight. And then, then, so I shot like six or seven shots with it. And before I was able to get even at the ultra wide level where it was able to get my face in the shot, most of them were like here with the glasses at the top Mm -hmm. part of the thing. And it didn't make it like a good shot. So long story short is, um, you got to learn how to experiment and use the tool for what it needs to be. And, and, and a shaky tripod is always the worst thing to do. Yeah, but I learned so, my lesson. Um, Jose is asking if we're going to get the photography kit. We both have them on order. Yep, um, got so it on order. Ordering the kit. Uh, I'm hoping it'll arrive soon because the ability to add filters to a phone camera is going to be really exciting. Um, yep. Reaper and for me, my phone will be leave, living in that case. But yes, because so. I, I want to use what you said to kind of transition. Because, like I said, uh, we talked when I started talking about the Rokit Air, uh, Rokit yeah, Max, yeah. Max um, and I want to get to your experiences using them too. Uh, the Reaper Blacks uh, says, "Are Oppo and OnePlus actually exiting the Euro- Mar- European market?" I am concerned. I I feel concern is fair. Mm-hmm. because there is some really wild licensing and patent disputes. And I do believe it is a possibility that Oppo could eventually find themselves in a position where it just makes more sense to stop fighting this type of legal action. At the moment, I think we're still okay. So I don't know what that's going to mean long term. We need to see how some of these court cases play out. And this stuff gets really messy, complicated, and it can take... a a long time if the judges um, prevent immediate action from barring imports into a, con- a country 
based on a potential IP dispute. So hopefully we see that they're able to work that out because Oppo had been making really good progress throughout the EU. Mm -hmm. I think yep. it would be a major bummer for consumers there to kind of lose out on a competitive option for that. Um, Simon says, Hypno says, it makes me think of VLC on Android's interface where you can kind of swipe brightness yeah. and volume. It is so much like that. And as soon as you know that that's what it's doing, you don't want to use anything else. It is so good. And, and I, I nailed this black and white photo of Lex. It's kind of portrait head and shoulders. She's kind of giving me pouty shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I used to like, black and white photo. Art. <laughs> <laughs> I've created art. Oh, I like it. It was so, Swipe, so snap, good. Art. <laughs> I, I love like it. it. I love it. Um, no, easy no, Computer no. Solutions is in, is in the chat. Everyone say, hey, Easy. Amen. I know he's going to be really excited to pick up the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Um, he seems like he was really interested in buying one, right, Easy? That you were going to grab one and tell all your users about it, all your uh, viewers about it. Maybe it would replace your V60. Just I'd, spitball in there. I'm sure I'd, that was a thing that you said you were going to do. Um, no, just, just, sure. uh, just. I, I'm absolutely positive that Johan or uh, it, it didn't sound like this, but just the way the comment is written here. I, I kind of want to do a dramatic interpretation of this comment. So, <clears throat> there you go, Juan. Yeah, show off them features. Just a little uh, terrible ASMR that's now in TK's my brain. skull. Yeah, exactly. It's it's in there. He had now. to take and off his headphones. Like, and I was like, um, okay, great. So I, I, well, on that I, note, I don't guys, thank out. you very much. No. <laughs> you see an ejector ripcord. TK boots himself out of the frame. No. I don't bring out that voice very often for good reasons. So you just heard why I don't use that voice very often. And now but it's it's on the internet forever, but thank you very much. Forever. It's, please <laughs> turn that into a short of some kind. Something. Um, to, to, to kind of cap, we are just beginning Absolutely. conversations on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. And I feel like this is going to be the phone that helps define a production conversation for both of us over the next year. So please yeah. stay tuned. Uh, we've got the camera kits coming in. I have so many, not like head to head showdowns, winner or loser, mm -hmm. but so many philosophy conversations that need to happen yeah. where yeah. I want to show Zeiss versus Leica is a profound difference. Sony versus Leica is a profound difference in what they are trying to accomplish. And I yeah. think that's going to be a lot more fun than just, this one had better colors. And look, this one is, is gooder at the portrait mode and has a selfie camera. Because this is not why you buy any of these phones. You are not buying any of these phones for that shallow kind of just point and shoot. Mm -hmm. We're talking about tools that are priced to achieve work out in the field that you might not be able to accomplish on a mid-ranger. And there's a yep. reason why they do the things they do. They're, so that's going to really... be the main focus of my comparisons. And neither phone, like if I hold up this Vivo and I hold up the Xiaomi, there is no winner. <laughs> it, no, no, it, and it, I'm truly... so excited to tell you that there is no winner. It, it's, it's really about trying to make you productive, lightweight, on the go with as many features as you can. And, it, and it's been getting better year over year. The X70 Pro Plus for me was a, a very big wake up call. Yeah. And I, I, I won't lie that I was Rocked my little, socks. I, I was originally anxious when I borrowed it from one and then I took it to cover CES because I was like, what am I doing? Does this make sense? Am I going to be able to get yeah. my work done correctly and not have a DSLR? And it just blew my mind. And then when I was able mm -hmm. to get it back in, in like middle of the year, it, it literally became my my def, de facto default phone till I got the X90 Pro. It's like, yeah. I only retired the X70 Pro <laughs> Plus till I got another Revo. So it, yeah, it, the, the story is still developing. And, and like I said, I'm going to try to put out some something on it next week, but I need to live with it for some time. And I don't feel... 
initial videos just to show bad pictures taken because I didn't get a chance to learn how to take the, take pictures on the phone yeah. would help anybody other than make the conversation more confusing. Um, and th like I said, there, there'll be more coverage and there was a massive update that came in, came up right up when I first turned it on. So there's, there's things going on. The X, the 13 pro, the 13 ultra is very exciting. Um, and there's so much to cover, but yes, speaking of the Rokid max, since we both got a chance to play with those, those glasses, Juan's still trying to shave with the 12 S ultra. Oh, no, that was, was just, <laughs> I, you know, you, you, when you care about a phone, you just like to rub it on your face a whole bunch. So that, I, that's how we do. You've it. got the the Rokid Max, and uh, so the Rokid I'll, Max for me. If I want and... to, I can start watching our show um, while we're in the middle of doing our show. No, no, absolutely, Although, absolutely. I think just try to keep will freak out if it can't find my face. Hold on. Let's oh, see. it finds your face. It's just you know, it kept like bouncing me to the side. It was really annoying. So anyway, <laughs> the 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 Rokid Max. Yes. So both of us got a chance to play with the Rokid Max. The, the Now, there, just to, for reference, there's two versions of the Rokid Max. There's the Rokid Max and the Rokid Max Pro. If you probably have heard of those, the Pro is a very different des uh, design. It's a, a this one that actually includes cameras. The, the one we have is the Rokid Max, um, and it's the 120 hertz or 120 hertz refresh rate uh, displays on your eyes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, in glasses where... I feel like the subtle changes that they've done to the glass, to the, to the optics, uh, the, 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 the operators, the, the adjustments that you're able to do where it does not change the shape of the image anymore. You're still having the large display. Um, the clarity of the glass and you can see, yeah. So it's, uh, it, it's because you have the shades in there. It, it, it yes, right there. I'm the trying to block my face. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but good Nvidia point. really does not like that. My face is being blocked. So. Because that the AI model is tuned for faces. This is not product showcase, my friend. That's a, that's a Sony feature. No. Um, <laughs> the adjustments that we get in here, the the lightness of the design, they're the they're easy to use, so comfortable to wear. I like the fact that I didn't have to put the glasses too close to my face, where the heat was becoming too much of a concern. Because for me, I edited like three videos with these glasses on, like full on from beginning to end. I was editing videos in the in the UI in the element uh, in using the glasses on my MacBook Pro, um, yeah. on the flight at the hotel, and it's so much easier than than having just the design just using one small fifteen point six inch or sixteen inch display. Yeah, it adds that massive experience, and it's so much clearer, so much sharp. Um, turning on the th uh, the one hundred and twenty frames per second when you're playing games, it it is noticeable. You will see the difference. Oh, it's um, real pretty. Yeah, no, no. It, the 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 sound, the improvements they did in sound over the the air edition that we had, it's like they woke up because I could I hear like the sound the on the flight, yeah, in an airplane, open ear with the yeah. sound coming straight from the glasses, and and they're not I can hear it. radically louder. But yeah, yeah they, no. they took those little teeny driver elements that they can kind of punch into these uh, glasses frames, mm -hmm. and it's just a lot richer. And the 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 sort of uh, dynamics are yeah. are um, are a lot better, and so even in I haven't I haven't taken these on a plane yet, yeah. Um, but the Rokid Air were basically useless. You had yeah. to have earbuds, you had to have or headphones, or you had to have something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I've used these out. There's a there's a, a Chipotle that's right over the parking lot of a Costco mm -hmm. where I'm at, and if you're out at that cafe, you can't hear anything. Um, and I was able to wear the Rokid Max and use that as like an open air. So I'm still like competing for all the sound in my environment, but it was so much clearer. The air would have been completely useless. Yeah. In yeah. A and, situation and like that. for me, the, the really nice part about it is that even my neighbor couldn't hear it on a plane because of the, because of the airplane noise that's already out there. The, the people around me weren't listening to the sound, even though I had the volume at a hundred percent. It was still, but it was still functional for me to be able to enjoy watching content on the phone. And not only did I enjoy them on the glasses, I ended actually ended up taking the sh the shades off because I liked how it it looks, how it fills yeah. up the whole whole plane in front of me. It's more, it's like more grand, and I can still see the when you know when the hostess are coming out uh, to yeah. give us drinks and stuff like that. I'm not totally having to like, like, hey, what's up? What is that? Yeah, hold on. What is it? Yeah, because you did you ever use the first generation TCLs? The ones that were permanently no. blacked out. Yeah, so they, they the, had the hard visor. I could. I, you had, at the, you time, had the, the more recent ones, right? The the NX, yeah, the the latest edition that they became lighter. They're more like the Air edition. They're mm -hmm. the, the first generation. I think you got a chance to play with it because we. Yeah. 
there was only I was a, on loner a prototype going of out. those. Those were yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were it was exciting, but they were a little rough around the edges. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but that that's the thing about it. We get a chance to yeah. touch base with tech that hasn't been fully baked. I'll say that. <laughs> the Macs are definitely a an evolutionary up, uh, performance upgrade. I think for me, I focused primarily on using them in the AR, the uh, uh, not the AR, but more like as a second display. There is an yeah. AR function and this is the same AR function we've seen same. in the past. Not really much improvements there. Um, yeah. This this is where the Pro kind of took to the next level. This is why I was trying to differentiate between the Max and the Pro or the Max Pro. The Max Pro has cameras on it. It really mm -hmm. was pushing into the AR and trying to use leveraging, you know, gestures and movements and moving things with your hands. But again, it's a different version of the device. For this, if you're looking for a device that or a, a display that you want to have that you could use to not only watch content, uh, be able to be productive with them, to actually do work yeah. through them, scripting, writing, editing video content that you typically would have to put in to either a TV or even if you just don't want to carry, like buy one of those portable monitors because there are options. I feel like yeah. this actually kind of fits into that niche because it's roughly around the price of what you would pay for some of those nicer portable monitors. Like like a good so I want to say my Innocent when it was brand new was yeah. a three hundred maybe three hundred and fifty dollar portable. That's better, OLED. Closer. Yeah, yeah, it's closer to it. Yeah. So if you were to shrink the OLEDs, make them pocketable because you can just yeah. kind of put them in a shirt pocket. But yeah, then yeah. improved the optics to make them projectable to like a movie theater size screen. Um, I feel like that's a fair compromise to spend another hundred dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, that's essentially what we're saying is, because uh, I've got I've got like one of my older ones right here. Like this is a really good. Uh, this is one of my favorite. Um, you mean displays or? Oh yeah. 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 So so it's an older 1080p um, portable monitor this looks ridiculous because you're just seeing a giant black rectangle reflecting light on my screen and i think i just bumped my microphone a whole bunch um i want to say uh, this is my why max it sorry the company mm -hmm. that makes this was why max it um and i want to say that this was closer to 250 when it was brand new and now you I can think... easily find these 60 hertz lcds for like i don't know 150 to 200 that's usually yeah. And and, the the, and you can find some decent 250s for like the two to three hundred dollars for the 4K versions too at the 15.6 yeah. inch. So they bumped up the resolution. I think this is overall, yeah. It's it's um the technology has been getting better, but the difference here is the portability and the ease of putting it in your pocket. And they come with like you know at least for us they sent us uh, accessories where you had the lanyards in there to be able to have it mm -hmm. hang. You can have it sit there. The hub is what really knocked it out of the uh, park for me because. Omar loved playing his switch on the glasses, not having to have to hold a switch. Yeah, it, it's such a functional. And the thing is that this hub actually also works with smartphones to charge and use it. Most of the time, we don't have these functional options. And look at that. It actually matches the 13 Ultra slash hub in it. Look, <laughs> it's one of those things you kind of if you're going to buy it, make sure you pick up the hub. If yes. nothing else, if you I, don't pick up. Yes, one USB-C. But what about two USB-C? USB -Cs. Now, now you have the same the same number of USB Cs as an ROG phone with the same functionality. One for power, one for video. Um, love it. What what love I really it. loved about it also is that I actually got a chance to hook it up to my PS Five, and I was playing oh, yeah? playing Horizon West with it. So that was epic. I was like, okay, nice. Because the the adapter obviously it doesn't work straight up USB C. PS Five does not push video over USB C. It needs over no. HDMI only. But they provided us also an adapter, uh, I think, for the USB -C, for HDMI to USB-C. You just need to give it power. Mm -hmm. um, and once you have that set up and it works, it is so nice to have that personal PS5 experience on the yeah. I mean, obviously, it's not on the go, but it is in my office, at least. I didn't have to play it on the TV. I had it just on my own. And it, the sound was amazing. And I was able to show some of the clips from that as well. So it, really nice. I actually, it's one of my favorite portable solutions. And the, the fact that I was able to edit three videos with it, yeah. to me is like it's a win for productivity it, is, it works it is so much closer a fight so for the unreal uh no not the unreal the rokid error mm -hmm. i liked these a lot but my recommendation was very specific for people that would have required the diopters yeah so if you suffered myopia to the point where you needed that kind of image correction mm-hmm then these were really the only ones that were going to directly work without having to work with like lens like inserts or some insert, other type which of Which I think everybody else was which doing is, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, my Unreal's, I have blue light blockers 
on my end and reels. Like I, I it's totally viable, but it, it, if you can get away with not having to do any of that, that's probably just going to be easier. But yeah. I liked the Unreal Air for my face, for my eyes. The Unreal Air were easier to use. Mm -hmm. um, the image was larger, and the speakers were better. Mm -hmm. And so now the Rokid Max come out, and I would say they've taken a small step ahead of the Unreals for audio performance. Um, the image clarity is very close between mm -hmm. the two, and I think it's within that margin of error where your face being different than my face might make the decision for which one works better for you. Yeah. Every face and set of eyes is different. You really can't make a perfect one size fits all for everybody's different faces. Absolutely. Um, so those those are subtle differences. But then the Rokid Max kick it up with 120 hertz. So as soon as you can plug them into something that supports high frame rate, it's just, yeah. it's, it's stunning. Um, so now we've got a real good fight. If you're not doing anything 120 hertz, I'd maybe say check out the Unreal Air, but now the Rokid Max have the diopters, the better speakers, and that super fast refresh. And the the removable face plate that yeah. was... Of all the things this, that this, I had a thing with it is... This drove me crazy. Yeah, so the, like the on Rokid a plane... Air, yeah, yeah. You can't do anything with it. So, so yeah, the Rokid Air... I don't even think I can show this off. There, there are screw points here built into the, to the back of the frame of the Rokid Air. So if you want to change the visor to have a yeah. blackout visor, you have to get eyeglasses, screwdrivers, and, and disassemble them, yeah, which yeah, yeah. makes no sense at all. Yeah, That, no, that and, is and not great design. <laughs> it, for, for a travel purpose thing, for me, all the, when I was using them last night, last year when we were doing the, the when we covered the airs, um, it was more of a have to take off, put it back on, take off, put it back on. This one, I just literally, I just take, I kept the, the 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 cap off, and it was so much easier. And although it's not magnetic like the TCLs, and I feel like TCLs yeah. gets a little bit easier, like poop poop kind of thing. It's not hard. It's just like you know, you pop yeah. them off, you put them back on, and after a couple of times, you like you know how to do it. But for the flight, it was much easier for me to do that. When I was editing video, it was also much easier because then I'm still aware of my environment. You still get that yeah. brightness. The display gets actually pretty bright, up to six hundred. Oh, I'm constantly nits. turning it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I lived I, in at four and five. I never even, I try not to keep there it at was, six for no reason. The, the, the only time, it, um, so I took the, the Rokid Max out to the park. Yeah, yeah. What, one of the moms that I hang out with when I'm picking up Lex, I'm usually mm -hmm. the one to pick them up, so I'm hanging out with all of the moms at the playground. Yeah. It's great. I'm one of the moms. Um, uh, she's she's uh, getting into app development, and she's coming out with, like, a trivia app, and we've just been talking about, like, tech and phones and she purposely made her app uh, android first because most of her family had androids and pixels and they're like this is really cool this is a fun conversation so i mentioned these glasses and she seemed kind of interested and i brought them out to the park i think the only time i've ever gone max brightness has been outdoor completely no shade it's an open green field of direct Southern California midday sun just hitting the ground. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that was the only time I felt I got to turn these up a little. And I really should have gone visor just to block out more of that sun. Just so they make it a, the contrast to be a bit stronger. Yeah, yeah it's but much, much easier to see. That's kind of the extreme element you need to be in mm -hmm. to want to use max brightness, max brightness. on the road. But, it, it, but it's nice that you get to have the you, option. You have it. Yeah. yeah yeah oh that's great and you can yeah, dial sure. it in it's and it's it's a it's a it's a dialed in experience um it's not just locked into where you need it to basically like okay so, well this one bright this Far one. farhan has a question and i want to throw it to you first because i have a very specific opinion on this and i'm curious what your thoughts are okay. uh, he says i'm still afraid of using these for prolonged use i'm wondering which of all these ar glasses which one gives the least eye strain from your personal experience so you've been editing videos on them. So between like the Unreals, the TCLs, and these Rokids, which one do you think was easiest on the eyes? I the there, there's a couple of factors into this. There's the stress to the eye, and there is the the approach to how much heat they're generating at the in the center, because all the processing power on all of these glasses are set that center and right in the center of your eye. So over a prolonged amount of time, that amount of heat around your eyes is going to exhaust them anyways. I will say the 
from a, from a comfort and experience of using for an extended amount of time, the TCLs for me and the Rokids have been the best ones. They've I've been able to stay for the with them for hours on end to be able to do work. Do I need to re, you know take breaks after some time? Absolutely. It's not something that you want to keep on for like six hours long. The Rokid, I would say mostly for where they where it is now. The controls on the on the nose bridge has been so much easier for me to control it, and because I'm able to put it a little bit further away from my face and adjust mm -hmm. the actual display. I've been able to wear them for literally three, three and a half hours, roughly, at a, at a straight straight hit without feeling mm -hmm. like I need to, oh my God, this is too much. So right. I, I would go more with the Max at this point, but you have to keep in mind that it's not a prescription. If you wear glasses, this is yeah. not a replacement for your prescription. And it's not going to be 100% to that prescription. I wear glasses. So for me... I, my main focus when I was adjusting all the images to get a really good, clear, dead center image. The outer air, outer rims may be a little bit somewhat shady, but it wasn't bad enough that I couldn't write. So as long as I was writing and everything I'm working on is in the dead center in my, my like the smaller square or the bigger square, I was fine and it worked fine for me. Uh, but I okay. feel like somebody with better vision, let's say Juan, would probably have a better experience because you don't have to adjust so much and you probably have uh, more leeway. So actually, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say even though out of the box, the diopters take more fiddling because I'm just a touch farsighted. I don't think I have better vision. I just feel like I have uncorrected farsightedness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably should be wearing glasses. Uh, it's not a problem for when I'm driving, though. Um, yeah. The um, I would agree out of the box. I think so. So first of all, the only thing I want to address for Han is again. Oh, shoot. I just dropped my mic uh, receiver there. Um, the the, the thing that I, I, I think is really important to, to kind of explain is you probably won't face any significant. So, OK, once you get a pair of glasses that fit your face, they're comfortable on the bridge of your nose. Mm -hmm. And that you've got them focused. So, so on my Unreal Air, focusing them means sort of moving the nose pads slightly to position forward or aft yeah. on the bridge of my nose. Mm -hmm. But once I've dialed that in, I've got a sharp, clear image. I don't believe you're going to experience any significantly different eye strain than sitting three feet away from a computer monitor your eyes, the optics are still projecting an image and it feels like you're focusing further out away from your face. You're not focusing in close on an image. Yeah. Because I am, I am farsighted. I, I can't focus real close anymore. So even when I'm like looking at my phone screen, I'm trying to take a crazy photo. Like I kind of have to trust that the phone camera is getting it in focus because if it's it's closer than about here I, I can't bring my eyes in as close as i used to be so out of the box i agree i think the rokid max probably deliver um the nicer image overall mm -hmm. but having moved to uh these lens inserts so i did a sponsorship and uh the company worked with me on my uh, gaming accessory so it's steam deck and Razor Edge and Nintendo Switch, like how to kind of customize. Um, and they sent over these lens inserts and mine are only blue light blockers. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I do feel, uh, it might be totally psychosomatic, mm -hmm. but I do feel I can wear my in reels with the blue light filters a little bit longer, definitely longer than I could the Rokit Air because the Rokit Air didn't fit my face as well. But I think I can hang a little bit longer than even on the Rokit Max. Okay. So if you're willing to customize or do lens inserts or something like that, you can maybe even improve the situation out of the box. Mm -hmm. I think you're probably uh, running longer on the Rokid Max. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, no, it, and I think this is the difference between that and these these glasses and the others is that you typically do need to actually have, and you'll get a better image if you're able to do the inserts. In reality, at the end of the day, especially if you have a prescription, it'll fix 90% yeah. of what the, what the diopters sure. were trying to do in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. and it, But it'll be still more specific to you, and it's harder to hand over to somebody else. 
where I feel like this is where I think I, I'll, I'll mirror this, where I was able to hand it over to Omar and Omar adjusted the diopters directly to his vision. And okay. I was able to adjust it back to mine. And I, I think obviously short of giving us presets, which I'm like, you know, maybe Roke, if you're listening to this next generation, give us presets, diopter, uh, you know, motorized like, you know, diopters. Well, more like, yeah. I mean, it, why not? Like, I mean, it's a moving part. <laughs> Just put a little bit. No, I, you know, more, more things to move and generate heat. Um, <laughs> That to me, I think was the, the benefit that I had here, which I felt like it's a little bit more e it's easier to hand over. That was yeah. prime that was my only other thing, only other you know, kind of thing. And TCL had the same thing. TCL did the inserts mm -hmm. as well. Um, but you know, then you have to get them, you get the glass, you have to go down to your optometrist and order the pieces, have them shaped the right way, get them back in, put them in, and then then you're a, you're able to get that experience. And that could be like a two to three week timeline, depending on your prescription. So things to keep in mind. Yeah. But once you have it done, it's like a tailored suit. It fits you, oh, and it's, it's for you. Yeah, that that's the whole point. But yeah, I you know what I I so I've been Sorry. trying to show <laughs> more of like family and friends, uh, the moms at the park. I you know yeah, I yeah. bring out a Steam Deck and people pick it up and they're like, oh, so it's kind of like a Nintendo Switch. And they kind of <laughs> yeah. shrug it off. No, and you're like, yeah, but you don't understand philosophically why this is so important to PC gamers that we have something like this. And I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. I plug them into the Rokid Max. And every single time, without fail, you can tell them what it's going to be like. It's going to be like you're sitting in your own private movie theater. A giant image is being projected out in front of you. Mm -hmm. And it's totally private experience. It's not mm -hmm. like VR. It's not immersive like that. But you are seeing this projection, and everyone kind of shrugs it off and like, oh yeah, I, I, I get, yeah, sure, whatever. It's like having a big screen, cool. And then you put it on their face, and it's always a wow yeah. that they've never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's not cumbersome. It's not heavy. It's not nope. weighing their face down. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do something silly like just get them started on Tetris Effect. Yeah. yeah, like Tetris is the universal. I had seven year olds playing Tetris and I had uh, 35 year olds playing Tetris. And every single time you put it on their face and it was a, oh, oh. And then they're like, what's great? This is my favorite. And I, and I, I bet you, TK, you probably had a bit of this experience too. Older people, you put the Steam Deck in their hands and they look down at their hands because yeah. that's where the game is. Yeah, yeah. And so you, just like on a Game Boy, if I've got to play the game, I've got to look down at where my hands are. Little kids don't know to do that. No, Omar so didn't. He, he wasn't. seven-year-old, I, I, put, I put the glasses on my daughter's friend, Jordan, and yeah. he's looking everywhere because Tetris is now everywhere. <laughs> And he had nothing to do with like the controllers of the Steam Deck. I actually had to put a jacket at a hoodie. Um, I had to put it so he would rest the Steam Deck on a cement bench. He, he could rest it on the, on the um, picnic table because he was just wildly like <laughs> flinging stuff around. He was like, there's going to go my $600 Steam Deck. It's just going to get flung. Um, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. But it's, but it's amazing. And, it, and it's one of those things where it is the more personal we make technology the more anecdotal the review mm -hmm. has to be. If I tell you why I love $4,000 electrostatic headphones, that's not something you can just go to a Best Buy and test drive. You just have to listen to me wax poetic about my experience. I kind of feel like these wearable displays are still in that holding pattern of mm -hmm. you are listening to me describe something to you you think you know what it's like because you've maybe tried something like VR and it's not like that mm -hmm. and it's different, but it delivers something unique. And as soon as you really play with it, oh, but you can't have that. Oh, until you really find an opportunity to put one on your face. I can't wait until these show up at like, I mean, like at a Best Buy or something. Yeah, no, I, I think this is perfect, like a perfect demo, obviously with, you know, clean wipes next to it, but uh, <laughs> like everybody sharing a sweat. But no, uh, it, it truly yeah. is something you have to try. Um, Omar loved the airs last time when we got a chance to play with them. And with this one, um, yeah, he was he was playing Switch where he was actually like firing at things with the glasses in front of him. And he's looking yeah. down like as if he's actually sniping. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. 
on the flight, I, I mean, after obviously when you've used it for some time, you get used to it. Uh, mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is, is yeah, you get to just relax. Your neck doesn't have to be propped up the whole time. You could just basically sit like this. Oh, and the whole so thing nice. is, is, is really like it's still very personal. Um, and it, it is so much better. You can so also watch grown-up movies on an airplane and not worry that some kid's going to be looking over your shoulder at inappropriate stuff. Dude, you can. Uh, okay, so this is this is the <laughs> thing that kind of uh, started getting me. The reality of it is. Airlines are starting to remove displays out of airlines, yeah. airplanes, right? We're just basically now, because everybody has a smartphone, United doesn't have displays anymore. So my flight yeah. in and out of from here to Chicago and coming back, you had to use your phone. And your boy was using the 13 Ultra as my phone connected Heck, to, yeah. the, to United's Wi-Fi. So I was watching United's ecosystem, uh, movies and shows and all of that on my classes by myself. That that's the level of next level kind of yeah. stuff that you're able to do on a display that literally, if it was really in front of me, it would basically be bigger than the the, the pathway that people can walk in the on the on for the sure. So the for me the the like it's clipping the borders of the airplane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, exactly. Because like somebody was asking me, it's like, hey, what do you mean when you take off the, when you take off the visors, it looks bigger? I tried explaining it to people, or yeah. I try to put it in words. It's the perception of the size of the display by comparison to the environment that your eyes mm -hmm. and your brain translates it to a bigger display. Like when the moon looks bigger when it's nearer the horizon because you're able to conceptualize the distance of it's different things in your environment as opposed to when the moon is like straight up in the sky. The moon didn't there's change nothing to compare distance. it to. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that's why what one was Same. explaining where it, even though the phone or the glasses are sitting here you're not focusing here. You're focusing down there. You're focusing Way much further there, yeah. and your eyes don't strain. Um, the heat or the, the temperatures that I would say are on, on these glasses are, is about the only thing that usually makes me move them on the TCLs. That was basically where like after a two hour watching a movie or an mm -hmm. hour and a half, whatever, I'm typically needing to take a little bit of a break. So I wouldn't do a no, very long stint. That's one I'd maybe give the unreals. I don't know mm -hmm. what the unreals are doing or again it could just be the way they fit my nose yeah um i feel like the unreals don't create as concentrated a hot spot they still get mm -hmm. warm all yeah. of these things still get warm there's a lot of processing that's going through and you've got micro oleds right above your eyebrows absolutely um but i feel like the heat spread is different on the unreals whereas Maybe. the rokids it's it's more like center. my T-zone. Yeah, yeah. It, it's more centered but, between my eyebrows. But for me, honestly, it was just a slight adjustment forward on this and then adjusting the glass, uh, adjusting the diopters sure. on them at that level fixed the You're problem fine. for me. And I think yeah. it was, per yeah, like I said, editing content with it sitting in a hotel room. <laughs> if you were sitting with me in the room, it would have been basically me close to the to the glass and I was like editing and I was like by myself looking up and the monitor and the computer's down there. I'm like, what are you doing, DK? Like, I'm just looking at myself. No, it, it, it is that level of experience. And I think it's enjoyable and comfortable. And it's, I like the case on the new one also a lot better. I like the stacked experience that we get in here, the hard shell oh, case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's like you put the cables and everything you on the bottom, you put the thing, and it's easy to know exactly how to put the glasses on. And it's hard shell and it fits really good. But yeah, so a lot of good things to say about that. And I, and I really enjoyed making that video. Uh, I, I I ended up shooting some extra B-roll at the end of just playing with the Steam Deck at the hotel just to kind of get things running on there. Yeah, right there. Uh, <laughs> I like so it. I, I, I feel like... I feel from the Unreal Air to the Rokid Max, mm -hmm. these are luxury purchases. We're still in the sort of like four to almost $500 range. Mm -hmm. None of these are impulse buys. But considering the very, very first generation of TCLs were priced more at like $799 in the countries that you could get them in, already we've cut this experience in, in half in price and it is a world of difference in how they actually function and operate from that first generation of TCLs. Um, even the new TCLs are a world of difference from that first generation of TCLs. This is one of those that I, I, I really feel a lot of people can now start putting on the list of things to test drive. Like, I think we're at a point now where we know the AR is going to continue to improve. We know the software capabilities are, are going to get better when developers get on board. I wholly expect we'll see a, a more mainstream competitor in this mm -hmm. space in the next two years. I'm yeah. assuming someone like a Lenovo 
would take this concept really seriously because they've so, already and, and, shown and, and, and yeah, I was going to say they AR. have exactly they've they've already released a pair of glasses. That's right. But why wait? <laughs> why oh wait no, no. For I, I mean, we, we have uh, we have Snapdragon this, Spaces this is, as well that's leveraging yeah. you know Wi-Fi connectivity. But but um, this is this is worth taking for a spin now mm -hmm. and to see uh, you know if it's in a state that it's going to fit your needs because this is really exotic technology for an experience that can undercut a TV, can undercut one of those portable displays that I just picked up. Like again, what you're going to pack it's, and carry it's competing with something at the same like price this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. is near that same price point, only it's so much smaller. And you can radically streamline your pack and carry weight for an even better personalized entertainment experience so i i, it's, I it's really all about lightweight lighter yeah. lighter kit that's literally 90 percent of what i've tried to do right the last few years and it's been so much fun not having to break my back let's just say what, that so when you were when you were watching movies what you were using the united no sorry not the united um i, I used both airline? netflix so i was when it is the united app Oh, so it was the United app. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So because it does screen mirroring, I wasn't jumping into any of that desktop right. experience. So I would just launch it, and the moment you put, you turn on video, it just flips the video, and it fits in this way. And it gotcha, turns on, gotcha, and your, gotcha. it turns on. Yeah, because it's fitting your your device. You're mirroring your screen. It's not the same as Netflix, where I feel like Netflix fits the display a little, a little bit bigger. But yeah. to be able to watch the content from the United apps, as opposed to having to basically hold my phone or you know put the thing uh, to hang out and whatever, everybody else was I trying love, to figure out a way to put their phone. And I was I like, my phone's photo. on the table. I'm just enjoying. I've it. used it in three different videos now, but it was um, it was on our flight up to uh, Sonoma. To San, well, it was to San Francisco, oh, uh, media tech. To San Francisco yeah, yeah, yeah. for the yeah. Media Tech Executive Summit. And it couldn't have worked out better where I'm taking a photo of at least three or four rows in front of me of everybody hunched over their phones. Yeah, that, that exa that's exactly exactly how it is. It's a it's such a weird like once you once you realize that like, you don't oh, have to man. do that, you're it's like so nice. It's exactly yeah. No, no, it, it it is enjoyable. It's easy. It, it's also much easier on your neck. Let's just say that. Uh, the lady next to me, I forgot. I, I didn't get a chance to catch her name, but she actually put a small her backpack. It's actually has one of those smaller backpacks that you carry. You know, mm -hmm. girls carry sometimes. So she put that there, and then she put her phone on there, and that she was using yeah. that as the display. And to me, it was like I had to poop. That's a and lot. Like, yeah. And I was yeah. like, okay. And then again, I, we we've been sacrificing so much comfort and so much space. I, I don't really feel great taking even a good medium-sized tablet. Even that is now occupying too much of the tiny little tray that they it, give you. It, it truly... And you have to stare straight yeah. down at your crotch to well, see I, I saw, the tablet. I saw one guy use a... So he had an iPad, and I don't remember which size app, but it was an iPad with a case. And what he did, the way United's new chair setup is done, there's the magazine uh, fold... Yeah, at, at the top. top. Yeah, so he just flipped the gate. The, yeah, he put it in. Out. So it actually looked pretty decent from a setup, but you're right. Yeah, Most people, if they and, don't have that case... I want to watch a really gory action yeah, horror know. film, and then I'm like, you know, I'm but not going like, to do that. I don't I'm not feel like I need to flight. share that with That's... half the plane. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you can watch whatever content you want. Like so I said, you know, Netflix is a great... Netflix, Disney, most streaming services allow you to download... Uh, content and then for me, I'm not gonna lie. I was binge watching the last season of the Doug of the Good Place because I just wanted a fun show to watch. The Good Place always hits it for me. It's a nice place, yeah. nice show to watch, and um, and then of course I have community in there. I, I preload a lot of stuff on my phones because we try like lately a couple of you know few flights back and forth. Um, I, so I'll, I'll I, say I wanna, it's a great recommendation. I wanna, yeah, I, I think we're both pretty positive on these. I've got another just sort of accessory video. That's, yeah. that's kind of planned, but I, I talked about these also again, um, comparing the Steam Deck and the Razer Edge and different yeah. ways that we can kind of customize that experience too. So I've got a video out on that. Your your main look at the Rokid Air, that, that launched this week, right? Yes. Um, okay. I had the video go up on, I want to say Tuesday, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday? Oh, no, 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 Wednesday. Wednesday. No, no, Wednesday. It was yesterday. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was yesterday because I was like, I'm trying to remember. I, I, I edited on Tuesday or no, no, sorry. I finished editing it on Monday. Um, and I needed to send it over for them to just to kind of let take a just letting them know, hey, it's like, oh, this is what is going up. It's it's scheduled so, for Wednesday morning, and I it went live right before up, I left. Yeah, I want us to wrap up the the podcast talking about OnePlus Pad. 
Yes. We, so we got the pricing find... on that. But before we do, yeah, I'm putting you in the hot seat. Yes. Simon says Hypno has a question. Okay. Oh, I didn't. And yeah, I've been trying not without to. <laughs> without a long explanation. Simon says Hypno asks unrelated, but next doc wireless or you perfect wireless ready go. Ah, it's a tough one. Uh, I, I'd have to say next talk wireless because that's the only one I got a chance to play with. <laughs> you okay. probably would be able to answer the question there. Uh, yeah, I'll throw it back. In, uh, wait, in, the in terms of price, so the Uperfect wireless is a little bit bigger, but it's the same resolution. And I don't know that the, I think the half inch difference in screen real estate is going to make any big difference. So if you want the clamshell, the lap dock, the proper lap dock, I would mm -hmm. say go next dock. But if you want the bigger portable monitor and you want to use that proprietary transmitter so that you have oh, yeah, less right. latency, yeah. 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 then I wouldn't go lap dock for either. I would go with the new Uperfect wireless monitor. I but think that's a better again, solution, especially in crowded areas. I'll, I'll, actually, I'll second that. And especially, that. Yeah, yeah, because it's just a dedicated radio. Um, but if you want it to be the more convenient all-in-one battery-powered package, then I would say next dock wireless over yeah. you perfect. And I think this is the the biggest thing I probably would say is the the next dock still works as a as a wired connection uh, dock, so you, you're always able to fall back yeah. onto it if you have sure. any issues. But the fact that it runs and it works, it's it's actually pretty nice. Um, I liked it very much, especially when I was uh, testing it out with all the different like with the. Uh, the Magic, uh, the 5 Pro from uh, Honor, that was mm -hmm. so easy. And it reconnects to the keyboard, reconnects to the mouse, and the display connection works yeah. really easy. Yeah. Okay, so um, I was incredibly wrong about OnePlus Pad. Okay. This is maybe the most off I've been in predicting the I... the, the price of, of a gadget. It, it's Did a, you catch... It... Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, uh, I've been, you know, actually. Just oh, not, not asking about me. I was just saying oh, you, you caught like all the OnePlus press releases and stuff because we yeah. had all the information about the tablet. Now oh, we no, finally yeah. know how much it's going to cost. And uh, did you put in a pre? I didn't put in a pre-order. I'm kind of mad now that I didn't. But I did. Oh, you did. I had yeah for hundred. Okay, so look seriously. At the worst case scenario, if it if they blew you were the just price through the, the beer, your yeah, I could have just canceled it, right? I got my money back. There's, it's really not a hard time, not a hard sell. The 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 reality is, it's a it they're they're competitive. This is this is one plus. This is okay, very competitive. Okay. If they're not going into this expecting to, you know, we're, we're not going to like oh, we're sorry, a thousand twelve hundred. We're competing with the twelve S Ultra, the twelve Ultra. I'm like, no, 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 no. You got to understand. Look. This is an Android tablet that is designed by OnePlus. And OnePlus, within the last year, has been focusing quite a bit about honing in and providing the best experience. And the biggest thing that I really love about it is their ecosystem buildup in this thing as well. They're promising us better integration with their OnePlus devices to be able to share content, share data. I've used these features on devices from Oppo before. This is why I'm excited for this. You know, uh, um, What's it called? Uh, PC Connect is a, is a tool that Oppo's been using for quite some time. OnePlus is finally bringing that outside of China and bringing it in. And for the most part, if you haven't heard or haven't seen this yet, this is a rebranded tablet from Oppo. But it is so nice to see the price point and market it in the way it is right now for the U.S. market. I think that's the biggest part, even internationally, not just the U.S. This is not going just to U.S. So the the way they approached to this when they did the whole put a down payment on something you don't know how much it's going to cost <laughs> was a tough story but you got to remember for me i got a chance to play with it a whole obviously very short amount like 10 20 minutes at, at mwc but i got a chance to use it so for me when i start when i saw the field the the the, the build quality the usability uh the pen functionality the response on it all of that was really nice I, I could not have, I mean, in my mind, I was thinking like there was no way it was going to be like six times to 10 times the, the hundred dollars they're asking me. It has to be a certain relative ratio. Um, and then we, yeah, we found out we are basically, it, it is actually a lot more affordable than you think it was. Yeah. The power that we have in here under the hood is crazy nice. And realistically, keeping in mind, real understanding that this is the first generation of the 9,000, not the 9,000 plus. Yeah. It works better with a tablet. You don't have to worry about the heat. It, the issue with the, we had with devices is our devices are much more crammed in on top of each other. 
using a chipset like this on a tablet works much easier. The the, the spread the heat mm -hmm. spreader on this thing is much well, easily done, and it's also we, we can, not touched. We can talk about we we can talk about some of the concerns that we have with phones that were launched at the beginning of 2022 with the Snapdragon yeah, yeah. 8 Gen One, mm -hmm. but. I, I I didn't dig as deep into them. I did not have the same kinds of immediate thermal concerns on the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus that I played with for a little while. I only had it for a couple of days. I didn't even really make any videos. It's on it because your because your hands are never in that area where the S where the GPU well, and the but, GPU are. But but also it's like you've got plenty of battery, so you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about the the SoC nuking the battery too aggressively, which is one of the reasons why a phone might throttle down. That's and then you've got concern. more surface area to handle that thermal load, which is the other concern with the HN1. Mm -hmm. And the Dimensity 9000 is neck and neck performance per watt with the 8 plus Gen 1. Performance wise, so yes. So you, you put, a, a, you know, the better chip, the more power efficient, high performance chip in a bigger, a bigger container, you've got more surface area for thermals, you've got a bigger battery to manage all of that. I would imagine that this is probably going to land somewhere in that 8 plus, one, 8, 8 plus Gen 1 to 8 Gen 2 mm -hmm. overall performance tier at sub $500. So Absolutely, really Oxygen banking. OS is is a lighter. It's, it's so much lighter as an operating system than using what Samsung puts in with their all of their options. And don't get me wrong, I'm not yeah. trying to bag on Samsung, but the reality we realize obviously is that One UI has so many layers and so many protocols yeah. and applications running in the background that you you obviously will will notice that. And I feel like OnePlus is even with Oxygen OS, sorry, uh, even with Color OS based running from it, it still performs very fast. And so I don't doubt, and that, that even with the early version that we saw, that I got a chance to see at MWC, it was snappy. It was nice. Yeah. It, and, it, and it's light. The keyboard is qu good quality. The material on the tablet is very nice. It feels like a premium, like seriously, it mm. feels like it's a thousand dollar tablet. It, yes. And, and so the fact is, looking, yeah. looking at that, and especially looking at the engineering, looking at the manufacturing, I was, I was talking up $599. Mm -hmm. as sort of the outside like high end it, it would still be hoping, reasonable yeah no, no no hoping that it would be 549 and i could be like oh see look guys they even beat my estimate on what an expensive but also kind of acknowledging that like its main competition is going to be a galaxy tab s8 plus which is now mm -hmm. on sale for like 650 bucks yeah i didn't think they would go 650 but you never know the fact that it came out at 479 is ridiculous. Dude, it's going to be cheaper than the Pixel 7a. That's it's going to be nuts. cheaper than I'm not saying it's going to go toe to toe with the 7a. I'm just talking price point. Well, it's going to be Dimensity cheaper. 9000 is going to give a Tensor 2 a run for its money. Oh, absolutely. So, I'm, so performance if, if we refresh look at, rate. Yeah. If we yeah. look at all the rumors on a Pixel Fold, you can pick up uh, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 powered OnePlus 11 and a OnePlus pad. And I guarantee you that that combo of discrete compute platforms, discrete mm -hmm. compute devices is going to be hundreds of dollars less than a Pixel Fold. And this is the big problem with foldables. You've got two monster performing compute systems that are going to be significantly less expensive than one folding tablet. That is, I think, going to be one of those hurdles that we have to see foldables really clear before yeah. this this is like before it makes sense that someone is going to want to pick up this one dedicated device over having two separate uh, computers. Yeah, it, and then leveraging the fact that the tab is well, the pad. Sorry, not the tab. The pad's going to actually function as a, almost like a laptop for the the eleven. So some of the things that they're promising with this is the ability of not only connecting your device to that device, like connecting your Pro One Plus 11 to the pad, but also the ability of sharing content between devices. So meaning drag and drop content and drop and sending mm -hmm. files directly, getting notifications across device. Lastly, sharing internet connection from your phone to your tablet. Yeah. That alone, if you think well, about all of the integration there. When, when, you, when you've played with stuff on, on the Oppo, it's not just like tethering, right? It's like... 
No, it, it's, it's like it's, an auto sync kind of. Uh, it's it's of screen pairing, mirroring. Right? It's it's the best way to describe it is it's it's a screen mirroring with control. Okay. It's so it, this is why I kind of called it like a laptop because in reality is you're getting a display shared wirelessly over to your device and typically the way Oppo's done it because I haven't had a chance to use Oppo's newer version on their tablets. Uh, my experience with PC Connect has been usually with PC. This is just gotcha. the mobile version of it. Last year in their, I think I want to say the Oppo Pad Air, their light, the Air side, uh, they released the first version for that for the tablet side. And that was around, it was during their Eno Day uh, innovations when they were doing a whole bunch of different mm -hmm. announcements, like with the Find M2 and all of that. So the way the technology works, it's basically a Wi-Fi connection between two different devices. And this is how you transfer data. And um, you're, you get a display on your on your screen, typically on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the PC. And where it makes it more functional on the pad is that it's a touch display because you're able to, you obviously at the tablet is a touch. So in theory, you should be able to connect and then basically swipe through your phone and be able to use the UI on your phone from the tablet and without having to have the phone like screen on which makes it even more functional for me. Like this yeah. is the level of integration where I, I, I actually don't even think Google can compete with, even with their tablet, right? I mean, you can, you can have well, notifications on one to the other, but that level of this, dedicated this is where, software. Um, the, the, cause uh, we've only just seen, no, no, no. I mean, cause yeah. I, I agree with you. No, the, I, I meant the... for the, <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh yeah. No, you're yeah, fine. yeah. Um, the, the, yeah, yeah. I think that the... you're showing it right there some of the combinations that we're seeing, like the ability to kind of um, talk to a Chromebook yeah. easier is kind of Google's focus. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of interesting is I think OnePlus Pad and whatever the Google Pixel tablet ends up resembling yeah. are still going to be different ideas of uh, discrete slate computing. Um, yeah. I really think Google is kind of looking at their solution as a replacement for those smart displays that sold okay, Absolutely. but yeah. didn't really take off. And so now we can kind of blur the line between a smart display and a tablet. It's more of a home ubiquitous um, I, Google I think, Assistant. And I uh, think yeah. the OnePlus Pad is really aiming at trying to be a little bit more of a laptop replacement. Yeah. And I really, I really think Google wants you to have a smart speaker or a smart display in your home a Pixel, a Chromebook, they want that whole ecosystem. OnePlus, I think, is looking at this and saying, you could have this thing running Android and it could replace your Chromebook. In fact, this thing is likely more powerful than most mid-priced Chromebooks yeah. out there, um, especially anything that's that's running an ARM SoC for a purpose-built Chromebook. At, at 144 this is hertz, be yeah, exactly. With a higher refresh rate display, and higher resolution display and quad speakers, which I'm sure sound pretty good. I mean, like yeah, I didn't all get of the chance, specs but... and stuff, like, yeah. yeah, that's that's solid, that's great, that's fun. The fact that it's coming in at 479 is is still what's kind of blown my mind on uh on that sort of price to performance. That's the that's how they do the value. That's how you get the value into it. People really feel like they're getting a bang and for the buck. And I think that's the biggest catch there. And I really hope that whatever agreement and everything at some point they're able to get it into retail because if they can get it into retail yeah. and get people to try it it's an easy win it's an easy this, sold this if you're need, looking for a see, tab it's or and again, pad this or, needs to have a little kiosk with a oneplus rep at a best buy yeah exactly because i i feel you'll lose you, you'll water down some of what makes this so exciting if you make the 5g version of it and it costs $150 more just for the 5G. Oh, yeah. And then you get co collaboration with Carrier and whatever. And uh, I think the way they're doing it is, is perfect. Let the 11 be the hub for connectivity. Let the 11 yeah. be the, the the brain. Well, not the brains, but essentially just the, the hub for connectivity, the, yeah, really. Yeah, the radio, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, in, in theory, if you think about it, you know, you could leverage the functionalities of the connection and then you're still getting a, a two separate devices, two separate processors, battery packs, all of that experience uh, independent from each other. And you still have that, okay, if you're done with the tablet, you put it down, you go back on the phone. But if let's say you did shoot a whole bunch of videos or content there and you want to be able to do a little mm -hmm. bit more work on a bigger screen, connect it with that Wi-Fi option. And it, it should work. I'm assuming it should have... Uh, nearby share and you should be able to just airdrop the, not airdrop but like drop over the content fast <laughs> you <laughs> said airdrop i did say <laughs> airdrop i'm yeah no i gotta stop. you know what i've been using what um been... there is a wi-fi direct plugin in fx file explorer which works really well 
Okay. Um, and uh, so especially for my Xiaomi 13 Ultra, which does not have nearby shared support, um, what you can do is uh, you have to sync the two devices up. So it's like an extra step over nearby share. Mm -hmm. But then once the two devices are talking to each other, uh, each other over Wi-Fi direct, mm -hmm. you can browse the other phone just like you're looking at the file manager on your phone. I may have to get that. I may just so have to do that. That's been FX my file my, my one uh, my one little uh, Achilles heel, if I have to say, of anything that most of the devices I keep getting from uh, that are Chinese ROM version is so the good. lack of nearby shit. Yeah, I mean Android Auto I can live without because I'm I mean I drive a Tesla, so it's not like I can use it. And again, nearby you don't has been have nothing. to you you don't have to like go through and plan like oh I want to get this file and this file and this file let me copy them. Or let me select them and then hit nearby share and then sync, tell it the phone. Mm -hmm. You sync the two devices. So you do that first. Yeah. And then on the receiving phone, you just look through the menus and folders just like the it file was explorer. Native. Yeah. 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 You're it's basically a file like, explorer for the almost other like you're phone. FTPing over. You're, you're getting an FTP connection. You're able Only to with a prettier with a prettier UI. FX yeah, file absolutely. explorer. Okay. I'll have to check it out. Good. Good, so good, there's good. like a little plug in. It's it's really inexpensive. I can't remember how much it costs. It has a whole bunch of other like network share tools and SMB and stuff like that. But the second I saw this little Wi-Fi direct plug in, I was like, ooh, oh, that's real good. Yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and the thing about it is I really love the fact that nearby share is also kind of working now with PCs. You're able to install that in there and then use that to transfer your content. But the reality is, you know, it, it's it's literally the, the fact, the, and I'm, I'm hoping this is how it's going to work. I'm hoping they kept the same functionalities in there. You're able to drag and drop content onto the phone oh, yeah. and from the phone. There's a big difference where you're like, you're working, you're working, you're working. I'm like, oh, hey, I want to take that picture. With, I'm done with that file. I'm going to throw it on my phone and finish it up on my way. Mm -hmm. You throw that file over there. You close the tablet, put it away in your backpack, and you walk around, and your phone, you're able to continue the work. And then if you're done, you flip so it back good. over. Yeah, it, it, this is how we need to leverage our devices. We need to be able to do more real, I, I would say more professional, more advanced level of work out of these pocket computers that we're paying $1,000. You know, I mean, obviously, it's actually neither one of these devices are $1,000. You know what I mean? Like, that's the cute part about it. I mean, good part, not cute. Very good. So what, like $700 for a OnePlus 11, 479 yeah. for, for a, one, uh, a OnePlus pad. One pad. Yeah. You've and if you decide it. to pick up the, uh, I mean, if you didn't pre-order and you want to pick it up, you know, separately, if I'm not mistaken, I think the case is 150 or is it one? Um, I mean, uh, case, case is 150 and stylus is 100. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think for me, if I had to kind of pick between the two, I feel like the case would be the one to go for because it's such a, although at the end of the day, there's going but to be if, third party cases. There's going to be but other if I options. I don't get well. the stylus, how do I do my terrible wire doodle sketches of starfleet spaceships that is true i think you're gonna have to go stylus first my friend get the tab and write right and then you, and Got also it. scribe that that novel that you've been working for literally on for literally that five seconds of my review where i show you the zoomed in portion where i'm kind of scribbling away a part of like the bridge and then i zoom out and it's the enterprise whoa Yay. if i don't spend a hundred dollars to get that five second shot then what's well you could have got it for free man you could have got it for free gratis <laughs> is muy bueno to say you know it's so much better I, and, and i just kind of wanted to put this in perspective because i was talking about like on on my podcast on monday before we yeah. had the 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 final pricing on this because i was way off i was saying 549 to 599 yeah, yeah. I was still comparing it. Like right now on Verizon, you can get one of the TCL tabs. I want to say it's the TCL Tab 10 Pro 5G Element OP edition. <laughs> because Verizon yeah. and 5G, and I'm sure it's probably got UW support for this. More than likely, in yeah. Inexpensive tablet. That thing's $399. With a Snapdragon 480, and 64 gig of storage for 80 bucks more you trade the 5g to just piggyback off your phone and in every single respect this is so much better now than the one what we used to pay for like a four or five hundred dollar tablet 
the one thing I would probably say is I'm hoping we'll see more storage options. Um, if I'm not mistaken, some of the leaks and things that we're looking at, like they at, did with the OnePlus Ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because I think that that it, it it I know in in on the um, the Opal Pad, they have 256. They have higher storage capacities yeah. uh, in there. But again, it, we'll have to see. Basically, it, it, this isn't intended to be. The you know you don't install the same number of apps. It's going to be specifically selective things that you install on it. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to still have OTG functionality. That's, that's something that OnePlus has had for quite some time. So, yeah. so it's not like it's to be too hard. But the, at the end of the day, I'm excited to see how the the technology, how the improvements have been done there, how it's going to work with the OnePlus 11. And I hope at some point they'll also allow it to work with other devices like that. Um, although I feel like there is some kind of proprietary software there. This is the PC Connect that I've done yeah. in the past. I've always worked proprietary. The fact that they got it running on Windows was a good thing. They didn't have they didn't have a, a UI for Mac. Um, you know, so it's it's one of those experiences you kind of have to. Yeah, I'm hoping we'll we'll have to see. The fact is, you know, tomorrow is is it, it's tomorrow, right? Isn't that the launch of well, not the launch. The availability is tomorrow. So if you're not doing pre-orders right now before the evening is over, yeah, they're, you're, they're, yeah, they're just doing the uh, finish. The I forget what they say. It's like you you pay the balance. You pay the balance. So if yeah. you did if you did the 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 one hundred the, the hundred dollar pre-order. You just um, pay the right now. You can't. You can't even pre-order it right now. I thought it was still on pre-order this morning, wasn't it? Oh, so, they shut so, it off. Yeah. No, it's it's uh they've shut off pre-orders now that they've announced. Oh the no, price. they they, the, they they said the they ran out. Yeah, they 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 posted yeah. about that. They said they were they were out of <laughs> the demand was too much, and I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I mean, they got like, people I'm, talking. I'm on the tablet page, and if I go to the top yeah. where it would normally say purchase, mm -hmm. I can notify. Um, but there is no option. I can either pay the balance if I did the pre-order, or I can just say notify me when it's available again. Um, so yeah, new stock will be available April twenty eighth. So I think the next round of pre-orders is going up tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, and I think that makes perfect sense because I think the initial one was primarily just get people interested, and even at full price, four seventy nine is still pretty decent. Like you said, you have to keep in mind. I mean, yeah. this is this is just getting in on the on the on the ground floor, and I, and I would not be surprised if if OnePlus does some specials at some point in the future. Yeah, and so, the yeah. tablet we have for Lex, I think, retails for three hundred, mm -hmm. and it's not as nice as this. I mean, like. This is a really expensive tablet to consider getting for a kid, but it's also kind of not. Like, if you can help them take care of it and not mm -hmm. destroy it, it's going to be a much nicer. Oh, I want to see some of the reason why I was saying, like, I, sh I probably should have done the pre order and gotten the pen with it mm -hmm. because she loves to do, like, Sketchpad yeah. know, artwork. Exactly. And she's been doing that since she was two on different types of screens and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, that that uh, even though it's going to be a little pricier, I might still have to look at like maybe for Christmas, Lex might need to get a new tablet. We'll so have we'll to see. we'll have to figure it. We'll we'll see how it goes. It's, for it's sure. either going to be this or it's going to be that Lenovo. I haven't yeah. I haven't kind of made up my mind yet. The Lenovo is pretty pretty good. Yeah, no no for sure. Um, with that being said, I know we we typically shoot for an hour and a half, but this time yeah. we didn't even. Not only did we not hit we the two it. hours, we we coast right by that. that little right second. by it. Um, <laughs> this week has been really exciting. I mean, I know we're exhausted. I know we're tired. It's like a whole bunch of things going on. But the, really, at the end of the yeah. day, we have super exciting devices that are that are we're lucky to both enough to be able to play around with and check out. the The twelve S Ultra was an amazing device. The thirteen Pro, the thirteen Ultra. Hey, I got it. <laughs> we got it. Um, very, very nice, solid build, solid performer so far, uh, still in that learning experience and getting better, comfortable with it. Um, more content coming from both Juan, myself and, and myself. Uh, of course, the audio podcast version of the show will be coming up hopefully in the next day. Uh, and of course, um, you know, stay tuned here. And if you have any questions specifically into what this, what, what are capabilities of this device and so on, please feel free to reach out to us on the Mastodons, the Twitters, uh, and, you know, uh, <laughs> private chat rooms uh, over on uh, Juan's Patreon. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, please make sure to check it out. Uh, the the review he was talking about before was is going on this Patreon tomorrow. Uh, so if you'd like to get access early on before people, the rest of us common folk can get access to, uh, please check it out. <laughs> Note, obviously, all the information for that will be in the show notes as well. Um, thanks for everybody. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Farhan, uh, Simon, everybody in there. Scoop, of course, Steve, and everybody taking time of your evening and spending it with us on this beautiful 
well, this is actually our last show for this month because by Monday, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's right. May. You know, it's oh, gotta be May. Weird. Anyways, that that was oh, my no. Justin Tim. That was Timber. Like, I it's all over TikTok <laughs> every <laughs> year at the end of April. Everybody's gotta like, you know, May. it's gotta be May. Okay, he's saying it's gotta be me, and you got no. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's um, always bothered me in pop music how me has become May. May. Yeah, like that's not. I know. I know. But uh, with that being said, thank you very much. We'll see you guys next week for another best of our week, hopefully with more conversations uh, and more oh, yeah. exciting technologies and actually even. Oh, I've got some things on my desk that I can't talk about just yet. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's how we that, that's how we do it. That's how, that's we, how do. we do it. And um, uh, hopefully for me, I have a scooter, uh, not a scooter, an e-bike video that's going to be dropping in the next day or yeah. so. Um, so I've been working on a lot of that. So just just more more things like that oh, scooters there's and, and e-bikes yeah. Juan got me hooked on the e-bike wagon and now i'm like just all over the place it's very good. uh but bye, uh in one show but yeah for that we'll see you guys bye-bye for now <laughs> <laughs> bam